everybody. Hi. It's Kim and Jennifer from Fleece and Harmony in Belfast, Prince Edward Island. Yes. And this is our Knitting and Other Stuff podcast. Yeah. <laughs> we do have actually quite a pile of stuff in front of so us. So much other stuff. Yeah. I, yeah. It's a lot to talk about today for yes. some reason. So we're all bundled up. Coldest day ever. It's Last been night, miserable. Yesterday. Yes. It was like hell on earth. But cold in my bedroom last night it was it was <laughs> not hell because it wasn't hot <laughs> it was more it was more like i never saw the movie frozen but i can <laughs> yeah it's been ridiculous even my so, hot water bottle lost heat overnight last night like it wasn't even as cashmere wa- yeah oh. like it wasn't as warm as it normally is when i wake up in the morning yeah so it's uh for those of you that are this is your first time joining us this is what this is what happens mm-hmm. <laughs> so we're gonna talk about all our knitting stuff and we've got a really great fun shop update yeah and uh we have finished projects and we'll talk about the farm that's what we do yeah and we've got some really good ask us anything yeah so we're gonna have quite a discussion on yarn pill why does yarn pill and yeah kinds of things like that so the farm update is basically that we're we're, freezing that we're freezing it's it's (laughs) flignac and cold and we have no broken legs so far that's no that's yes, the big update. The, all the sheep kind of went for a little skate this morning, <laughs> but nobody even slipped, so that's good. Those hooves, I've got not my really little, designed uh, crampons on my rubber boots yeah. in the morning when I go, and because it's really so. What's happened is two days ago, it was like kind of nice, minus three, minus four. Things had melted, I think. Things melted. The snow was gone. Was about to turn into March. Everybody's saying, "Oh, maybe March is going to come in like a lion." That was so great. Of like a lion. Then. We had a downpour of rain because it went up to five degrees Celsius. Then it flash froze down to minus 14 degrees Celsius. And the wind picked up to, I think they were saying that there was gusts of 90 kilometers an hour. Well, I saw 80 last time I checked, but you couldn't see the road from our place, which is about 400 feet from the road. Yeah, yeah, you couldn't see anything. It was gusty. It was blowing snow. And um, when the bridge closes to high side at traffic that's what happens because we're joined onto the mainland with a bridge a 14 kilometer long bridge it's pretty amazing actually Mm -hmm. but um when it closes to high side vehicles that means that no transport trucks no groceries yeah so if you hope that it's only going to be for a short amount of time and um but my our last uh row and order is stuck on the other side of the bridge (laughs) i didn't know that (laughs) it should have been delivered yesterday oh yeah i mean it's over in Moncton, New Brunswick. Nothing can get on or off. No. That's, yeah. At high side. It. Yeah. So a transport, a transport track. transport track. Yeah. So yeah. if you have some kind of little car. But quite frankly, driving over that bridge at the best time, I wouldn't be driving in high winds on a little, in a little car. It's we, perfectly safe. It's just a psychological thing. But. We went over a pretty windy day with three sheep in the trailer one yeah. time. Well, and I was, in, and I was in I was in a CRV. <laughs> Not, yeah. But like, it's better if you can't see up over the railing. Yeah, that's one thing about going across that bridge. It's really high. You'd be yeah. ama- you'd be shocked we'll how high it is. Yeah, okay. Yeah. You don't really get the. It's high for something that long. Yes. In a section. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that crazy. boats can go underneath, I presume. I think it was yes. Right. It's, and it was uh, when they did it. It was the longest, highest. Yeah. I don't know longest bridge over rough open ocean or something yeah I don't know. anyway there's all kinds of it's things somewhat of like, an engineering marvel of yes some, or accomplishment right. of some kind yeah we right. should know this but we don't yeah <laughs> so yeah so that's it so we're freezing and we're dressed yeah. for the weather yeah and i've been crawling i literally have to crawl up to my door to get in it yeah because i there's like a little hill embankment mm-hmm. that goes from my house down to the pavement and yeah. like I crawl up and well I slide down in every morning just tobogganing just like a six-year-old yeah and I go like about 20 feet out into the middle of the driveway <laughs> and then I crawl back up and it was so cold that salt doesn't even work Mm-mm. like it's a Not certain really. after a certain temperature yeah. however by midnight tonight it's going to be or by the before the sun goes down tonight is going to be up to minus three again, which is pretty good, actually. It's not going to melt the ice, though. Well, the sun is starting to melt a little bit. Soften it, I would say, more than melt it. Softer would be better. Yeah. It's when it's hard as, like, literally just It was like, like cement. I was trying to pickaxe it away from the door. It's granite. Just like, it's just like yeah. granite. Yeah. It's crazy it's hard. Anyway, so, welcome so to Canada. It. Yeah. Bienvenue. <laughs> 
So anyway, so that's it. So the and the sheep, uh, we feed them indoors and outdoors because they can come in and out at like they're they've got free free mm-hmm. free range <laughs> to come in and out. And uh, we knew that it must be cold because they're in full fleece because we're about to shear, and uh, they didn't touch their food outside yesterday. So and they, they wouldn't ate. go out this morning. No, they ate in last night. They were like, so. "Are you crazy?" Yeah. Anyway, so. Uh, uh, you know what happens? I don't know if, I, if you're aware of this or not, but when we wake up in the morning, our bedroom window looks over the sheep pasture. Mm-hmm. So when we get up in the morning and go, get up to get our coffee, decaf for me. Mm-hmm. And, All of uh, us yeah, at this point. Except for Ken. Oh, okay. And um, so we, we always look out the window and they're all out. So they're all eating. So this could be anywhere between 5.30 and 6 usually we're out. They're early risers. Yeah. <laughs> so you look out and they're all out there. You can see them. And if it's if the weather is, you know, somewhat decent, they're laying out in the, in the field by the feeders and stuff. And you can see them. They, we go out at around between 8 and 8.15 usually. And... Ken puts them all in the barn and we close them into the barn because we put some food out in the field and it just makes it easier to get out to the those feeders if the sheep aren't there. Now we've been doing that since winter started and now by 8.05 they're all in. They go oh. in themselves. They go in to they disappear. This is like this is how we make the food dispenser yeah. work. <laughs> yeah exactly. So you look out at six and they're all out. And then you look out at 8.05, and there's not a sheep to be seen. You need seen. to do, not a time lapse, but you need to take a picture at 6 tomorrow morning, and then okay. take a picture at 8.05. Like, okay. I really want to see that for yeah. myself. Yeah. Because I can't see them. But I do know when they used to be in the little courtyard thing, yeah. that if I got up to have my coffee and turned the light on, they'd yeah. start yanging for the yeah. breakfast. <laughs> you had to, like, sneak in, like, in the dark and make your coffee, yeah. or they'd start screaming at you. Yeah. But now I don't, they could, if they were actually looking up into our bedroom window, they might see the curtain twitching, yeah. but I just, they have their, it's without fail. Amazing. Well, you do have to take a picture because okay. I actually okay. want to see that. I've got plastic on my window, so I'm not sure how clear it's going to be because <laughs> that's what we yeah. have over the old Yeah, that's uh, how we stay warm windows. here. Yeah. I do I have a good chuckle thinking about all the people that moved here over the past year thinking that this was just paradise and then you like last night well, we haven't had a bad winter though oh, no not. but like yesterday they called the all the cars off the roads yeah because the blowing snow like you don't understand if you're in a place where once the road is plowed typically like in a city or whatever yeah. it's plowed if yeah. it doesn't snow again yeah. you're good yeah here it will just fill back in in a half yeah. an hour they'll plow it again it'll fill back in and so you can be driving and where there's shelter, it'll be perfectly clear. Yeah. And then you will hit a snowbank. a snowbank Yeah. in the middle of the Trans-Canada yeah. Highway that would be like a good 8 to 10 inches high. And you can go right off the road. Yeah. Like Which, um, on a perfectly clear, lovely day. Yeah. It's just crazy. And we won't get political, but that's what hedgerows <laughs> do. <laughs> that's political. That's farmer political. <laughs> that's farmer political. Trees over potato plants yeah so the so people that have the farms that have cut all of their hedgerows down yeah to and it's an a extra, barren i mean people in the states you remember the dust bowl yeah <laughs> like yeah. that was a thing and farmers that have left their um hedgerows or have replanted them or whatever yeah. it does really block yeah. the, road, the yeah. roads and the in stuff so then once you clear it it, it can still fill in but it's yeah. very definite as you're driving yeah Hedgerows clear, yeah. no hedgerows. Boom, yeah. wall of snow. When it's, when it's yeah, windy. and yeah. depends on the wind direction. I mean, the snow still falls on the road, but mm-hmm. the wind doesn't move around. It doesn't fill in as much, much because there's something to block the wind speed. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Anyway, so that's uh, I guess that's a rant or yeah. <laughs> people will be like <laughs> political yeah. planting trees. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get crazy. A proper hedgerow takes up quite a lot of space so yes, to create the truly buffer, does. it takes it would take acres off of a, yeah. a field so when you're when you know when you're a farmer and your margins are tight yeah. that makes a difference but it does make a difference margins as well are to, tight. Keep the, to keep yeah. the hedgerows intact and it would be much safer for drivers yeah. there's a few spots between here and town that i mean we know where they are yeah if you didn't yeah You'd get a you'd big be surprise. in a bit of trouble yeah, yeah. You'd get a big surprise yeah but it wasn't just the blowing snow because i was listening to the 
plow reports like from the plow operators and it was because the there was so much water because it was like torrential downpour that it froze literally flash froze and then the snow went over it and then it froze again because it was uh freezing sleet or whatever yeah so it was so thick that you could plow down to something solid but it was ice it was it was it looked crazy i I think probably nobody on this island had their car out last night no no not at all like in town i guess it was okay but they have a lot of windbreak you know so but it was still apparently quite challenging yes even in town yeah and that's that's really saying something and then uh town is of course the city yes (laughs) (laughs) and i was talking to janet olgovy from green gable alpaca yesterday and we were talking, you know, farmer, two old farmers complaining about the right. weather. <laughs> so anyway, she she uh, posted a picture this morning saying, okay, so here's some perspective. And she showed a picture of the her barn door. Um, so there's she goes into a in I think she goes into her barn on one in one door and then she opens another door that lets her alpacas go right. into yes. their field. Yeah. And she showed a picture of when she opened her that door, the, the alpaca door, that morning, and literally you couldn't see daylight. The snow was all <laughs> yeah. the way up to the top with the imprint of the door. <laughs> oh my so goodness. Said, okay, so then, and she said, I had to actually dig that out before my alpacas could get outside. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness anyway so that's some perspective so her barn was built for the wrong wind direction well the door the, the wind direction changes, changes sometimes. periodically yeah. i mean yeah. that's a whole thing too which yeah. position do you put your barn in like where does it where how often does it fill in yeah. in which direction yeah because one it might be one door one week yeah. and another door the next is so like, we have doors on either end of our barn and literally the drift, it, depending on the way the wind blows, it can be so high on one side that you can't even get in. Yeah. And then the side, the other side that we usually leave open, the wind is not usually blowing that it's direction. It's like bare ground. Bare ground. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's pretty, pretty fascinating. Amazing. Things anyway. that city people don't realize. Yeah. <laughs> most likely. And with things that we didn't realize. Yeah. 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 <laughs> True. Well, we were city people. Yeah. I think that's we, right. yeah. we were city people. Definitely. Anyway, so that's it. So Nobody can talk no about broken, the weather like no, a maritimer. Yeah. No broken legs. No concussions. So far. On those spindly little yeah. hoof, hoof and feet. So that's good. And you try to tell them to slow down, but they don't listen to that. They can tell time. They know when it's 8.05, but they don't know to slow down. Except for Diva. Crowd management with sheep is not a yeah. thing. Diva. She gets our it. Our old girl. She's very She's careful, fallen, honey. obviously. <laughs> I don't know. She is super not tentative on here, ice. But she's no. very... Uh, she'll wait. Yeah. Everybody else can and go And she out. goes out. Yeah. She's uh, and she's pretty big. She must have fallen. Yeah, she's yeah. a big sheep. Yeah. yeah, biggest we have for sure. So uh, anyway, she knows what she's doing. They should pay attention. The poor to little her. thing, though. Sometimes she doesn't even want to go eat. Yeah, like she's scared of it. Yeah, she doesn't yeah, like so ice. She's, yeah, <laughs> she's the only one. The rest of them go out and they're like, Phew! yeah, like I read out on their side. They yeah. don't care as long as nobody breaks anything. Yeah. yeah. All right, good. All right, so that's that. That's it. It's so ice. It's the. It is the movie for Yes, and we're dressed as we said yeah. for the weather. But you're going to talk but about this yours. This isn't too heavy. So no. I mean, this. Oh, like I'm super excited. Yeah. Is it my turn? We'll talk about, no, no, I'm going to say what I'm wearing okay. first. So for those that uh, maybe you haven't seen all of our podcasts, I'm actually wearing my Sunday cardigan, mm-hmm. which was knit with Garfield Grizzly and two strands of Kid Cell K's held together, but. Um, since when I was knitting this, there were a lot of people that knit it, and um, Janet that works with us, she knit one, and she used self care worst it with mm-hmm. one strand of kid silk haze, so that we've got all kinds of variations mm-hmm. uh, around. But and we it. shrunk this in the dryer, or you purposely, yes. and is that holding? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. It was too big, so yeah. when I, it's supposed to be kind of like a comfy, slouchy. It looks, looks about right now. Yeah. I was sure, just wondering just if it had, had yeah, mohair. Hair. No, it's actually not coming off of this. I don't know what. what if it had is. grown again but it's still good yeah so it's uh it's good and it's super super cozy so that's it well after watching suzanne bryan's swatch watching thing watching yes. thing you could do it once more and take it down another notch yeah like i didn't realize that would happen that it would just felt more and more each time yeah, yeah. that's pretty cool yeah you kind of think it felt it it's done yeah but no, no. when she did her yeah. super wash non super wash experiment yeah. which a lot of you recommended we watch and we did watch it yes interesting Uh, yeah it was interesting it was a bit different from my experience with superwash in that the gauge looked more similar Mm -hmm. Um, but she didn't say if she used the same needle size for both 
yeah, put some swatches or not. I assume yeah. she probably did. Yeah. Um, but it depends on the brand. But if you take yeah. like a super wash sock yarn with the same specs as our woolly yarn, yeah. you won't get anywhere close to no. the same size of a swatch yeah, <laughs> using the same right. size needle. Right. Um, so I'm not really sure if anybody knows more details on how she did that, but they looked to me like they were knit with the same size needle yeah. and came out the same size. Yeah. And that has not been my experience. No, mine either. At all. No. Um, okay, good. So Hi. whips and rips. Yeah. I've got nothing. Oh, no, I have one thing, but you have two things. So yeah. you go ahead. So I'm going to do the fast one first. Okay. So the fast one is Paisley is back in rotation a lot of people have been asking i know they're very concerned i know so no worries <laughs> and i actually have uh um knit another three inches on this since i dug it out of my bag it literally That's took me an hour and a half to figure out where i was <laughs> that's the worst of laying yeah. down a project yeah, that's why i haven't time. picked up the slippers again it's yeah. the worst so um but i ended up and I was worried that my tension would change because now I've been knitting uh -huh. all this stock in that. Yeah. And this is, uh, anyway, so here it is. So, so my, you, are you back up to where you were in the pattern before? Still not. Oh no, I passed it. You passed. Okay. I passed oh, I it. thought you had more done before you no, ripped it out. Okay. No, it was about this, okay. about this, but I've passed, uh, slightly okay. where I was because I've now finished all the decreases. I have another, um, inch to go and or 2.5 centimeters and then um there's an increase so i'm past where i was and, and you are going to sew on all your embellishments i certainly am i, can I can't hard, wait i can yeah, hardly that's wait that's the fun part okay and uh it's been so long since i knit on it i went digging around just to make sure that all my little bag of goodies i knew where it was because i'm anticipating that someday i'll be ready <laughs> yeah. So the one good thing about this, though, in my gauge, the each one of these little panels is actually a centimeter, mm -hmm. so I can count the. Right. That's good. <laughs> yeah. So and I could, you know, I picked it up and I'm like, okay, did I have the blue in my left hand or my right hand? Because I do two handed knitting, but luckily I figured that out. So I was preparing myself that if I got it wrong, I'd be able to see it and that I'd have to rip right. out. But I I got it right. Yeah. Should have taken notes. After all that. Oh. I never take enough notes when I set stuff down. Yeah. So, and I did kind of slide it on, and it looks like it's going to fit perfectly so far. That's good. Yeah. I mean, this project, like, you needn't worry, because it's like people are, are writing to me, you're never going to finish that flat rock. Listen, I spent I don't know how many hours doing those two 14 and a half yeah. inch pieces of that tuck stitch. Yeah. I'm definitely going to finish it. Yeah. Like, there's no way I'm letting that go. Like, I have way too many sunk costs. Yeah. <laughs> So the only little issue I have, and it has nothing to do with the pattern, it's my my own body, is that um, it's heavy enough that I find my wrist gets tired when I'm knitting it. Mm -hmm. I've had projects like that too. Yeah, but yet I could knit all day long on my rein. It's and the it weight. Doesn't, it's and the also weight, yeah. the, the um, well, this isn't a large yarn though. Sometimes no. it's the weight of the yarn, like if you're really having to manipulate it, like yeah. a bulky, yeah. it, it tires your wrists out and stuff too so i have to put it down mm -hmm. i can re get two or three rounds and then i have to put it down so i've been switching back and forth but i didn't it makes a big a difference few inches. yeah yeah and it doesn't really feel that heavy but it must be just heavy enough it's pretty heavy. i mean the rain is light it weighs as air, nothing so. yeah all right so that's that so the front with all the paisley and the back with the checkerboard and um and for people that have written and said that Andrea from Fruity Knitting has done the same thing and have talked about the gauge and everything, I know. <laughs> so, so we did, her and I actually talked about it. And um, what I did instead of changing, uh, I think she changed the needle size mm -hmm. because she, you get, you tend to get a tighter gauge on this back part, on this checkerboard than you do in the front. But what I did was I averaged out the the gauge overall and I had recalculated all my measurements and everything so I'm actually because my gauge was tighter um so I was getting more stitches to the to the inch than the pattern called for I'm actually making the extra large mm -hmm. the bigger size than right. than uh, and it's, it's working out perfectly yeah that's so, good yeah all right so that's that and then I can put um, it over here so that's okay we're not our table gets a little less crowded as we go. So just to recap on rain. So this is, um, this is like, it's funny. we own a yarn store. I'm sure I could get a stitch holder somewhere. 
<laughs> yeah, but honestly, why? When yeah. you can just leave the tips on and you have your uh, stoppers, right? Like, why, yeah. would you do, why would you do a stitch I know. holder? I know. That's right. The Jago needles. Yeah. So the back, nothing to see here. Mm-hmm. And uh, for those that hadn't, had, if this is your first time watching, I did knit the front and the back on, uh, two at a, like two at a time, the two pieces at a time. And um, so this is the front. And I have to, I want to hold it up again, partly so much Chiagu cables again, with the <laughs> stoppers, because um, when it came up on the podcast, when I watched the pot last podcast and we, I was holding it up, I thought it just looked fantastic. Yeah. I love this little guy. <laughs> yeah. I feel so. like his name or her name should be Andre. Okay. Sure. <laughs> or maybe... It's really Gustav or something. Yeah, <laughs> it's uh, really cute. It's really nice. He's singing. Like I love it. Yeah. So the other thing I should have, I actually should have knit like a little tongue hang. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it's really cute. Maybe not. Maybe yeah. we should cut that part out. No. <laughs> so when we uh, when we last saw each other, um, I was pretty convinced that one side on the shoulders was. Um, bit longer than the other so I didn't know which one was right if the short one was right or the long one was right but I took a guess or a, a chance and ripped out the first side oh, that that's I exactly did exactly the problem I had with yeah. the sunset and then I realized that um, while I was knitting it after I had it all ripped out and I reread the instructions what I had read the instructions incorrectly oh on the first time I got it right on the second time oh okay even though it just was reverse the shape yeah I, I, <laughs> <laughs> my so favorite I noticed uh, a little part where I went back and forth once um, too many times in the counting. I sometimes find it a little bit tricky when it says, and then the fourth alternating row. And yeah, you got to get used to that yeah. uh, nomenclature for alternating row. Cause yeah, you're, so is it, do you knit the four rows first and then you alternate? Or is it, and this was on uh, each row, at the beginning of each row, and then it was or alternating row, each alternating row, and then it was alternating four rows and alternating six. I was just I'm just like, amazed I've gotten my stuff right. Yeah. Like all the British patterns or maybe European patterns yeah. that I've done use that. Yeah. And it's very succinct. Vernacular. Right. Yeah. 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 Anyway, so when I redid it, it came out perfectly. So, um, so that's it. And I wanted to make a little comment about joining the yarns with this alpaca classic as well. Because I... I did something that I don't normally do and it is working out okay so I'll show you on the sleeve so I was doing split splicing but it is fine enough that when you is where you it's only a single ply so it's not like you can cut the mm -hmm. extra plies off like what you do mm -hmm. to make the same width on plied yarn so it does come out a bit thicker luckily my joins that I've done on the front um are all kind of over here so they're sort of not in a not right in the middle or anything but you can i can see them because you could do that same thing that you told me to do which just started on the edge yes okay so i did that uh, at one point on this piece on the back piece i think i have it on the edge so that that's that but then i thought i would get really cheeky and i'm doing the sleeves now and i'm almost finished the increases on the sleeves here i'll put it up here if okay. i'm done with it so also two at a time. I'm all about the two of two at a time. Now. I am all not about the two at a time. <laughs> I'm all at the. I'm lucky if I can get one at a time. Correct. So um, what I actually found out. So you could do it at the edge, and I did do that. And then I mean you don't really waste that much yarn. Like it's not. Mm -hmm. It's not like a big disaster or anything. Mm -hmm. But this yarn actually works very well. If you, um, so maybe it was on the front or the back that I did it. Oh no, here. If you tie it in a knot. So before you panic, <clears throat> I'll tell you what I did was I um, started knitting like you were joining a new color. Mm -hmm. So I just added, and I left two long tails on mm -hmm. the back that like about four inches or five mm -hmm. inches long. And then I lightly tied a knot. Mm -hmm just to hold it in place mm -hmm. after I knit it and on my way back just when I came across the knot I undid the knot mm -hmm. I just worked from the front to make sure the tension is right and then I tied a square knot mm -hmm. tight in the back so it's important that you have your stitches in the right position before you do that 
like and don't, don't tie it too tight. Yeah. yeah, like don't don't. And then I tied a square knot. And if you don't know how to tie a, a proper square knot, you need to do it for that because you don't want it to slide around because mm-hmm. the square knot locks. And then I just clip the ends, and you cannot you can't see anything. Mm-hmm. Like it really is. So invisible. I've done that before, and then just sewn in the ends too like well, without joining even, at all. I'm not even going to. Yeah. Like, I've tied the knot as a placeholder and then gone back and just sewn in the end. Yeah, you could. Or woven in the end. This is so fine that you're, you think would you'd have be a able double. to see it. Like, especially yeah. if it's somewhere. Or you can just start at new ball at the yeah. end. <laughs> the edge of the thing. I think starting right. at the edge is, like, the is the best. Yeah, like, is, this was kind of a little experiment, but you, mm-hmm. it's, it's absolutely invisible. Yeah, I just, a knot on the inside would bug me. But Yeah, well, you can feel it's how. It's my sweater anyway, so you won't mind it. <laughs> all right so what's it to you i will yeah what do i care if there's not so i'm going to um i just have one more uh six alternated rows doing one more increase and then all the stitches are increased so then it's a straight shot to the top so i'm almost done but i will make sure that it's long enough for your arms if that's it, important because i got some long arms yes are so, they longer than yours though well, I don't know, but they seem like they are. Well, I mean, it wouldn't really be because you also like yours longer over the wrist, yeah. and I do too, but yeah. it would probably, if you did yours the way you like it, it would probably just fit yeah. at my wrist. Yeah. I have more long hands than I do long arms, yeah. but I'm always trying to hide part of them <laughs> so they don't look quite so, I don't know, like I have some kind of... Yeah. <laughs> long. Form of... Long and skinny. Yeah, okay. Weird... <laughs> DNA. I don't know. Nobody else has these. In our family, no. I don't think so. Did mum's mum? Uh, I don't think so. Yeah, I think something went on in the womb. Yeah. <laughs> Just You're saying. scratching to get out. It's fine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, so that's, um, so that's that. So this is actually coming, coming along. So I have uh, one more round to do the, the last increase and then straight stockinette and then bind off and then I have to do the neck band so it's I'm really hoping that by next podcast it's done hmm. I met my deadline yeah. I was knitting <laughs> and carding simultaneously yeah. to do it though alright <laughs> okay FOs right so I'll talk about my Galbraith yeah I think I'm finally saying that correctly yeah, but so. God only knows so stunning I love it. Yeah. I love it as of like an hour ago when I put it on <laughs> because I kind of was a bit mad about the whole thing. Well, oh. I was a little bit worried and then I was a little bit meh. Oh, really? Well, I thought it was going to come out super cropped. It didn't. No. Oh. Okay. So I think a lot of people are going to want to knit this after seeing it. Yes. And we're going to tell you all about the yarn. Seriously. Too. Like I, I love it. Yeah. And I'm not usually like the flowy open sided garment type (laughs) and I was first going to put it on without anything underneath and then I was like well that's not going to (laughs) work um so I'm not usually into the you know like this kind of loosey-goosey yeah bat wing yeah drapey no structure like I'm uptight yeah right so (laughs) not as uptight as your llama (laughs) in some ways I'm uptight I'm uptight about like I don't like loose clothing at all yeah um anyway so it does not match the schematic. Like something happened here with the measurement where I thought it was four inches too short and it was going to be super cropped, but it's not. So yeah. I think it's a little bit maybe confusing as to where you're measuring along this slope shoulder to okay. get the 20 and a half inches I was supposed to have. Yeah. Because I had 16 and a half. Yeah. But yet I think it looks like the picture. Yeah. Yeah. And I used the right amount of yarn for the size I'm mm-hmm. knitting. So that mm-hmm. tells me it's in here somewhere. Yeah. And my, my stitch gauge was perfect. Right. I didn't bother to count my row gauge, which I should have done because this is a pattern that lists the number of rows. It doesn't give you a measurement. Right. Uh, and so you do the need to... The schematic has a measurement, but it doesn't say yeah, knit to 20 inches. It doesn't inches. say knit to 15 inches yes. and then do whatever. It says right. knit 74 or 76 right. rows. Right. So... Don't do that. If it's if you look, you know, read if the you pattern through. Your, if you and your row gauge. yeah, if it goes by rows, you do kind of need to be aware of if your row gauge is on or not, or right. you could end up with a really long or a really short sweater, right? right. Like the number yeah. of rows is completely irrelevant yeah. if you don't have the row gauge that they've listed. So that is super important to note. But it actually worked out okay yeah. for me. I wouldn't want it any longer. No. And I mean, I did block it aggressively. 
It's also a bit narrower, believe it or not. Yeah. It was supposed to be 31. This is only 26. Oh. But I like it. Yeah. And I did use that extra width to block it down a little bit. Right. Um, Because, you know, it's like out like this or down like that. You can make that choice when you're blocking. Right. Uh, And I was going to try to block it to the schematic, but then, and and do the strict, which I could. I could get the 31 out of this. But I chose to get all the extra length instead. So I guess, however you feel like wearing it, block it that way. Um, But yeah, I'm a bit confused about where the measurement was Mm -hmm. supposed to fall. So you can take a look at that later and figure out. I just have some little knobs here from where I uh, had the pins in. Yeah. It's literally um, right off the, yeah, the like blocking I just, board. I just uh, wove my wens in like at lunchtime. Yeah. And I wasn't sure about the high neck and it oh, just no, looked kind of shapeless and whatever. But I put it, I love it. Yeah. And like it's so comfortable and cozy. Yeah. So this is felted tweed held double mm-hmm. because it calls for the felted tweed air and weight right. in the pattern. So for those that haven't seen the beginning of this, yeah. felted tweed Aaron and felted tweed DK are match perfectly if you hold the yeah. felted tweed dk double you get exactly the weight yes. and length of the um felted tweed aaron and it works out so that it's not even more expensive no, the cost is the, the same because the, the balls are a different size yeah exactly and it's priced by the ball so and you just okay i just want to talk about the construction a little bit because it's pretty cool it's a little bit jennifer beale-esque the way oh, um okay. who is this kim hargrave no lisa richard no kim hargraves i think no who designed this? I don't know. I can't. Gosh. I think Lisa Richardson. Yeah, I think it's Lisa um, Richardson. I just finished Sorry, Lisa. Graves. No. Now I'm on to Lisa. Okay, so you go up the front. I right. think it's the front. You short row this entire neckline, entire shoulder, blah, blah, blah. And then you knit back down the other side. Oh, okay. So it's all knit as one piece. Like okay, this, there's cool. no piece in here. Like I just went up the top, over. And so the short row part is like really quite an adventure like it's yeah. i mean i did it twice and i still wasn't bitter because <laughs> i wasn't happy with so it, the first it looks time. like there's kind of like a seam there almost yeah so that's the just rows? the double stitches the double stitches yeah okay, cool. and now this is from my pins yeah so i basically need to steam this flat i just yeah. didn't have time to do it because i was so there's not like a design there no no it's, but I mean, it's, some oh, of yeah, my here I can see it matches perfectly. Yeah, I mean, yeah. some of my double stitches still resulted in a little bit of a hole. Oh no! But if you steam that, I'll yeah. But this is fine. just from the pins because yeah. I was yanking on it pretty aggressively to get extra length because I was right. so paranoid it was right. going to be so short. But as it turns out, so it really uh, helps to have those blocking the knitter's pride blocking yeah. pins that we have, eh? The blocking. Um, the knit blockers. Knit blockers, yeah. <laughs> Whatever you call them. Especially if you have Yeah, to. because I wouldn't have gotten it if I had used those. Yeah. That's right. I don't know why I use the individual pins this time. I never do. No. I don't know why. I, I'm out of my head this week. Yeah. I don't know. I'm st- <laughs> like, it's a stress of feeling like I'm going to break my neck every morning trying to walk to work. Um, and I've been dying today, so yeah, my finger's purple. Yeah. If you're wondering. I haven't been injured. You'll see. You'll That's see. And I always have, like, I, I pull the strings apart after the dye, so I always have all these, like ridges oh. and that grabs the dot oh. <laughs> so it just makes it look extra lovely um but yeah and then it's open underneath which i didn't yeah. realize by looking at the pictures even so though it's it is. only attached by this little, yeah the you cuff. just knit the cuff and bold move she didn't have you cast on at all like you just you put mean? these two edges together without adding anything underneath like oh, okay yeah which made it kind of like oh am i going to be able to get that in the round and not have a gap yeah you know what i mean because usually if you cast on the stitches you would have i always cast on an extra couple and then knit yeah. them together to yeah. make sure it closes up nice well yeah. you didn't really have that as an option i guess yeah. i could have picked up extra yeah but there's there was nothing here and then you just join this in so i have to say for having no no it looks fine i don't have a gap no I did a good job on that. Yeah. I think it'll be interesting for me to... I can't take it off because I'm wearing a very unflattering tank top underneath. (laughs) But I just want to turn it sideways so they can see where the short rows all come together. Oh, okay. So that forms the shaping of the shoulder. Right. So yeah, it's knit all in one little fun piece. Then just pick up the neck and the two little cuffs and... Right. You're done. It was really fun. Yeah. I didn't think I would want to... It would necessarily be as much my style as I hoped, but actually I like it even more than I thought I was going to. Yeah, great. Well, that's I good love that it. happens. And that's out of magazine 68. Yeah. Yeah. Or no, is it 67? Yeah, 68. 68. Okay. I love it. Are you going to knit the skirt? I think I should. Yeah. I think. I should. mean, I'd be very warm. I'm not sure what kind of a meeting I could wear it to. 
No, I'm leaning. Well, now I'm you know, like, yeah. outdoors? It's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> if the Sheep Readers Association met outdoors, yeah. it would be perfect. Like, I mean, I feel like with the skirt and the sweater, I the bare conditioning should, better be on. I think you should knit the skirt. I think I should, too. Yeah. For real. The fabric is really nice. Yeah. So the nice thing about felt, we'll do a deep dive on felt at tweed next. We haven't, didn't do a row in no, we didn't. yarn last nope. time, and we're not going to do one this time either, but... Uh, we'll do that next. Yeah. The um, it's quite drapey. Yeah. Felt at Tweed DK. Yeah. So the fabric that you get with it, and this just is still drapey, but it has a little bit yeah. more cushiness. To Coziness. It. Yeah. So I mean, it's thicker. Yeah. But it's still lovely and flexible and yeah. soft. Yeah. So it is a very interesting. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I'm not a prickly person. Like I don't mind, but I don't tend to love turtlenecks. No one in our family really does because of the, for me. I wear the, the I chin. Wear them all. Time. yeah you do i don't know yeah i don't know but <laughs> I it's, no neck. it's it's not i mean i'm not the most sensitive person when it comes to wearing wool but i don't find it scratchy no. and i've got just a teeny tiny like camisole type of thing underneath yeah. it this is all on my bare yeah arms and i'm yeah. perfectly comfortable yeah good so it looks really nice like late breaking news i love it yeah two hours ago i was like meh so the one thing that i want to point out is that this is treacle right yes the color is treacle so, um, felted tweed Aaron comes in a very limited range of colors. Yeah. So there's not there's not that many, and it was knit in that in the in the magazine. Yeah. So there's not that many colors. The fact that you can do it with felted tweed means you've got like forty to pick from. Fifty. Yeah. There's fifty colors. Wow. I think or sixty now. I mean, imagine one. this in one of those chartreuse greens, yeah. like one of those Kate Fassett collection, yeah. or you know, like yeah. Somebody said to me this morning, like, I bet this will be your thing and you'll, like, knit ten of them in every color. It's kind of tempting. Yeah. Like, it's a pretty cool You'd garment. you have to have a navy one. Yeah. Every... I mean, it was out of my... I don't know why I was attracted to it as something to knit. And it's definitely not something I would buy at the store yeah. necessarily. It's not the way I typically dress. But I'm in love with it. Yeah. It's so nice. comfortable. Mm -hmm. it's very and nice. I love this. You know, it's perfect. Yeah. And can you roll that down if you wanted to? Uh, I could. Not really. I think it was. You could add long, more. Yeah, you could. You could knit it twice as long and yeah. then make an actual turtleneck. turtleneck. You just have to make your bind off not as. But I believe it's shown standing up in the yeah, magazine, it looks so nice. I left it's it standing not, up. Uh, I mean, I can like try. It's just the right height, though. No, it doesn't look as good. No, I don't think so. No, it was really tricky for me to figure out how to do my hair with a turtleneck. Because like the, <laughs> <laughs> like it adds all this, you know, yeah. and then the. I had it in a braid and it looked terrible for some reason. Yeah. Like it made my head look really small and flat or something. Oh, but okay. so I added a bit of height here. Yeah. I'm not sure what, <laughs> not sure what that's about, but it definitely looked better. Anyway, it's great. And you have a full option of colors if you want to do it that way. Yeah. I mean And you got the gauge perfectly and Yeah, if I got the gauge right off. I didn't have to adjust my needle size at all. Yeah. Which, which is, is unusual. Yeah, I am almost yeah. always loose. But then I got really nervous over the row gauge part, but it's fine. Yeah. So I was either measuring it in the wrong spot or the schematic is a little off mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. I don't know. So will you wear it a lot? I think I'm going to wear it a lot. Yeah. I mean, most of my stuff, like the things I wear the most are my flax from years ago. Yeah. My Emerald Mania, I still love. Yeah. My ranunculus, I wear a ton. I mean, yeah. I guess... You wear all your nails. Yeah, the only yeah. things I don't wear... Like, the Ahava ended up being too tight in the shoulders. Right. I had to give it away. Right. Um, but, yeah, there's not too many things I've knit that I don't wear regularly. And um, that magazine, 68, has a whole... Sec all the Like, the main feature patterns are all seamless. Oh, is that the idea? Yeah. Oh, It's okay. called seamless. <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> right? And it's fun. Yeah. Seamless construction is really fun. Yeah. So if you don't want to do seamless yeah. garments, then... Or seams in seams, garments. Yeah. yeah. If you don't want to do seams in garments, that whole section is seamless uh, yeah. things. So I got to look at how many balls the skirt takes to try to get an idea of how long that would take me to do. Right. And this was... It worked out perfectly with the yarn too, right? I have an extra ball. Okay. But that's misleading in a way because that's really half a ball. Right. Because I would be holding it double. Right. Right. So I had about a half a ball and a little bit left over right. as according to, I think, what the pattern required. But I find with Rowan, they do round up. Yeah. Like you usually have. You don't get caught. No, you won't get caught. But of course you have to catch it if your yeah. gauge is correct. Yes. If your yeah. gauge is way off, you could knit a football field mm -hmm. and of course you're going to run out of yarn. Right. right? Like if you're going to follow the yarn recommendation in a pattern... 
you have to get the gauge right. Yeah. <laughs> or the yarn, you'll use more yarn. You're yeah. making a bigger garment yeah. or possibly a smaller one and right. you'll have a ton left over. Yeah, that's right. So it is important for that too. Yeah. Good. And it's very stylish. And it was quick. I just love it. Yeah. I'm all about it. I'm <laughs> and it's broken rib, right? Yeah. So not difficult either. No, there is was it nothing TV difficult watching? about it. Well, surely the broken rib part is. Yeah. If you understand broken rib, it took me a little bit of time to figure out what Practice. broken rib even was. Right. But then once I knew how, figured out how to read the stitch pattern, right. then it was it was TV knitting. I definitely yeah. knit on it. Okay. Not the short row part. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a substantial amount of short rows to get like from here over the top, but yeah. they were fun. Yeah. And then you carve out the neck by binding, uh, like putting on a holder, right, um, at the frontier, and then Great. just keep going. So it's smart construction. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, it was. If you want a little adventure but nothing too crazy, this would be. Yeah, this would be it, and yeah. it's done quick, so it's yeah. very. And it's really bothering me like, these lumps now. Oh well, but I'll steam them out when I go upstairs. It's um, she literally was still on the blocking pad yeah. at lunchtime. So yeah, <laughs> I'm still damp this morning. Yeah. But yeah, so well, that's a fun great. one. If somebody wants something to knock off quickly, yeah, would make a nice gift because it would really be flattering on all body types. Yeah, um, it's not something that you have to worry about getting the size just exactly right. Mm -hmm. um, so that's always helpful too if you want to knit for someone else. And how uh, long do you think it took you to knit it? You had to wait for more yarn to come. Yeah. Out. Oh, so actually, there's two dye lots in here yes. too. Oh, yeah. So my alternating <laughs> scheme. So I had like four variations I was alternating in. Yeah. I actually put something up on Instagram stories one night and I had like six balls laid out. Yeah. But you, I think it's at the back, but you can't tell no. where I added on. No. And they were quite different. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Were they? Oh, I don't yeah. even know if I had the front and the back right on this thing, yeah. to be honest. But what I did was I had very little yarn left because I kept being tempted to knit on it more and use up the remaining of my original dye lot. I was like, I'll just do a few more rows. <laughs> so I had like, I had a marled, uh, I want to call it a round, but it's not a round. I'd have a marled row where I held one strand from each. So this is where the fact that it's a yarn that I was holding double actually came in really handy. Right. So I did a marled round followed by a two, both strands of the original round Followed by, this is the bold part, two strands of the new one yeah. round and then back to the beginning. Oh, okay. So I had balls <laughs> and then they're in those little donuts yeah. and I like to, like where I was doing two strands of the original, I like to pull from the center oh and, God. yeah, okay. from the center and the outside and then like a couple of the balls collapsed. Oh, and I was knitting here with um, Jolene and Rachel and they, they were looking over and they're like, I think you're really in trouble. <laughs> like, <laughs> I think you're going to have to cut that and wind it. Like what, what, <laughs> something's falling apart over there. So I had like this pile of strands and there was like three different variations but going. Work. But I got through it without having to reball anything. Yeah. Because when these donuts collapse. Yes. It's not pretty. No, it's and not. And then I, I didn't just have the one form of donut. I had two other sets of... And you had to keep them straight. Yeah, and keep them straight. Yeah. <laughs> and the reason why she was knitting, it was on purpose, on purpose because she wanted to start the sweater before we got the next order in. Mm -hmm. So not that we would recommend that no. you knit with two dye lots, but and if anybody's wondering, oh yeah, they said that you have enough yarn and then you had to get another dye yeah. lot, it was that we were at a stop. Yeah, like I started and I knew I only had four balls and yeah. I called for nine. Yeah, you know, like yeah. it's just there was no way I was gonna make it. Yeah, but that was fine. I was, I'm, I'm a risk taker like that. Yeah. But I think I can't. I don't know if it's on which side, but I don't see a demarcation no, you cannot, line. You cannot see anything. No, on the front or the back. So there you go. Have yeah. courage. Yeah, it all worked so, out. Mm -hmm. And they were the dye lots were years apart, like a year yeah. apart. It's yeah. not even remotely close. Yeah. <laughs> so. Great. Ooh, okay, so their other finished object, you're, we're going to take a small break. You're going to put it on. Yeah. Okay. All right, we're back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just love this color combination. I know. It's so unexpected. So this is not my sweater. No. This is uh, the lovely Jennifer Hicks. Yeah. Test knit this sweater. Yeah. For Susan Clouston. Clouston. Yep. I was going to call it Clouston. It's like Houston. Houston. Clouston. Okay. Okay. <laughs> The the famous right. designer of yeah. Selkirk flip mitts. Yes. <laughs> Infamous. So, yes. Yeah. So Susan generously um, developed that pattern for the Selkirk flip mitts and gave it for free. Yeah. To all our customers. Yes. 
Hundreds of them. Yeah. yeah. Hundreds and hundreds. Seriously. So, yeah. So then uh, Susan uh, came back and designed the sweater. It's the Eleanor sweater. Mm-hmm. And it's made also in Selkirk Worsted. Mm-hmm. And like I said, it's not my sweater. It's uh, Jennifer's. But um, I wanted to sh- put it on. Yeah. So you can see the, the so yolk. The yolk is really spectacular, honestly. Yeah. So top down yolk. And the perfect thing about it is that you have your main color of yarn and then this all of the yoke work no matter what size you knit only takes one skein nice yeah yeah so it's one skein of variegated or whatever you yeah want. and this is wild rose and vineyard yes okay yeah it feels really nice yeah so, so if, <laughs> if we do I say love, so I, I love ours, so yeah worst it all right so um so just to show and there's texture in mm-hmm. the color work Pretty cool. It's really cool. And what makes that? It's like a little pearl bumps. I didn't, oh, okay. I didn't really pearl look bumps. at the chart. Yeah. I haven't knitted, but it I looks think like they're... pearl bumps. Yeah. Very cool. So you have the variegation and the texture. Yeah. In the and then the rest is just straight. Yeah. Straight knitting. Yeah. So the original pattern is uh, a three three stitch I cord on the cuffs and on the bottom of the sweater, but Jennifer decided to do seed stitch. So mm-hmm. she did about an inch and a half of seed seed stitch, and it has this kind of nice, um, like it's just a an open mm-hmm. an open. There's not a tight cuff mm-hmm. on it. So you can imagine with that with the I-cord it would be right. nice as well. But she decided to do the seed stitch to do a little bit of a different mm-hmm. um, a different uh, look. Mm-hmm. And she also did the same thing on the bottom. Right. Yeah. So that's that. The neck is nice. It's not mm-hmm. too, like, too close. It's This is a larger size, obviously, but it's not, it still has that kind mm-hmm. of openness nice open at the neck. neck. Yeah. yeah. And it's really meant to be like a, you know, a comfy... Mm-hmm. sweatshirty feel mm-hmm. as well nice and casual and, mm-hmm. but this uh just this I, i'm always i'm a big big fan of using the variegated yarns in the yeah in the color work yeah I think and really i like nice. this is a little bit more high contrast than how susan showed it yeah um but i love that yeah so we can show a picture of susan's yeah and it's low contrast yeah. hers is what crocus and uh blue poppy blue poppy and crocus yeah. okay yeah. So, uh, and Vineyard and Wild Rose, it's perfect. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Crocus. I know it's Blue Poppy. For no, sure. it's for sure Blue Hot Poppy, and I think it's Crocus. Yeah. yeah. So, anyway, so, I don't know. Is there anything else that we want to say about the design nope, itself? No, it's just a new pattern launch. Yeah. And uh, Susan has another pattern for a poncho that we haven't even gotten testing it yet. Oh, yeah. Of uh, Elden Lace, so that's oh, coming okay. up later, too. Yeah. Yeah. So, again, Susan doesn't want any money for the pattern. Right. So, but she... Um, has decided to that if we want if we sell if we'll manage the sales of the pattern for her she'll donate all of the uh sales of the pattern to andrea and andrew for for fruity knitting yep so what we're gonna do is um, we'll match that donation Mm -hmm. so if you purchase the pattern and the yarn to make the pattern on the same order, yeah. just because we don't want to get into too much of a nightmare right. trying to keep track of everything. Well, the pattern but... is what will indicate that it's part of the donation. Right. <laughs> and then you need the right. yarn to make it. Yeah. Right. So um, for everybody that orders the yarn and the pattern, we'll match together in one donation. Order. Together yeah. in one order, we'll match the donation. Yeah. So then $16 so then... will basically be going to Andrew and Andrea. Yeah, for every, yeah. For every uh, purchase, of purchase of the sweater and the pattern. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, that's clear. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll be you know up front and let you know how much we are able to yeah. donate when we we finish the sale we'll run it like yeah. for a month let's yeah. say because but, we want to get but if the pattern sells by itself that's still all going to fruity yes. thing too yeah, yeah. that's yeah. it okay so that's uh for a good cause yeah a fun, a fun knit yeah it's a beautiful it, sweater it is i mean well it's done great. susan and, and jennifer yeah. tested it and the pattern was really well written so yes. susan's knocking it out of the park yeah yeah <laughs> so i think this is her first pattern sweater pattern i would imagine done. i think i mean so. i think the glove the flip mitts were her first pattern period yeah <laughs> if anybody knit them they're they're great yeah, yeah. and the poncho uh, is really nice too that's mm-hmm. coming up oh, okay. yeah great Okay, so that's uh, that. That's the Eleanor. Okay, yeah. that's so fun. Yeah. Like, it's it's a really nice sweater. So thank yeah. you, thank you, Susan. Yeah. Uh, and so drip oh, yeah. time. Oh, drip time. Dream, <laughs> dream in progress. So thank you to everyone who made suggestions <laughs> about uh, my <laughs> love's sweater. Mm-hmm. 
he's a finicky one. (laughs) (laughs) So, and I mean, this does not just extend to sweaters, uh, which of course is not a bad trait whatsoever, but he definitely has something in his mind. Um, The funny thing is I finally got down to the bottom of it. So he sent me this picture of a sweater and uh, it kind of had this high neck and it looked very, I mean, it was very regal. You're going to knit the flax. Yes. But he didn't want it in In stockinette. stockinette. Even though it's topped out in the round, I'm going to be doing garter topped out in the round. So it's very textured. Easiest swatch ever because like I didn't even have to put a border on it, right? And it falls perfectly. And I did get gauge the first time, but I went down to a four and a half. And the flax is typically knit with a five uh, in this weight of yarn. But I know I'm loose. But yeah, so I got this. You're a loose knitter. (laughs) I'm a loose knitter. (laughs) God. Did it get hot in here? Jeez. (sighs) Siblings. Okay. (laughs) People just spit out their coffee. Okay. (laughs) Talking about making a sweater for my steady here. All right. (laughs) Um. Where was I? So <laughs> went down and you go by. <laughs> so I got this picture, yeah. and it was like this very regal-looking sweater that legitimately looked like something you might wear under a suit of armor in cold okay. weather. Right. Okay, and he was like, "See how this might look like you might slay a dragon in it, or there might be hobbits running around, or whatever." I was like, "Wow, this is a tall order for a flax sweater." Yeah. <laughs> It's really not the most complicated, uh, stylized yeah. sweater whatsoever. But it's supposed to... He wants it to look a little bit like chain mail. Okay. You see. So I think he, that fits the bill. I think this is it. And, I'm, yeah. and I, t- I, I mean, I can see how it does look a lot like reverse stockinette. Yeah. As well. Yeah. But I do think that the garter is probably... I mean, it does look a lot like reverse stockinette. <laughs> well, you'd have to knit another swatch and see... I'm just going to do the garter. Like, why yeah. mess with it, right? Yeah. If he wants it, if he, I mean, I think this looks great. I think and that the, slate. the um, if I'm not mistaken, the garter is a little, would have a little bit more space between the bumps. Yes. So then it does look more chain. Now that you know yeah. the reason yeah, why. Yeah, it's chain mail. The chain mail. <laughs> I call it the chain mail sweater. I mean, we'll grab the Irish wolfhound a horse. Does he want to borrow miles He can put the sweater cuts? on. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we'll put him up on Miles with the sweater on. My horse I'm sure like, we've got something that looks like a sword around here somewhere. Yeah. And I'm telling you, yeah, he'll be all set. Uh, use your, your pipe uh, insulation that's sitting over in the corner. <laughs> yeah. Well, pipe insulation. So my your, Miles is like not, you know, Shadowfax from Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Is like the, you know, the princely right. white steed. Yeah. I... I Tongue in cheek, call Miles my white horse. Well, he's not doing a bad job. No, he's not. The problem is he'll charge the dog. Yeah. So getting them all together in a photo with somebody who's never ridden before might be. Yeah. Might be a challenge. But we might try it. Yeah. What could possibly go wrong? Yeah. Anyway. So I'm gonna knit the flat sweater now. The sleeve detail was like a huge ordeal, and I got oh. so many good suggestions. Yeah. Cables. Doesn't like cables. Oh boy! I don't. I'm not. I don't. I'm not sure I fully understand that part. But it might be from what he thinks it's hard because he watched me written it, drove back for a year. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> He's well, trying that's to a take funny it story. Easy. Actually, I don't yeah. know if I said that. I got to tell that story about our first date. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, anyways, um, yeah. I I think I'm gonna do the stockinette. Because you know what? Yeah. People said, well, it might be flimsy, but yeah. this yarn is robust enough that I yeah. think the stockinette will hold up to the garter, yeah. at, even as an insert. Right. And the truth is, in the original pattern, it works in the reverse. Right. So, again, what could possibly go wrong? Yeah. And he does like a kind of more sportif looking kind yeah. of design, which doesn't really go with the medieval fantasy, but <laughs> I'm doing my best here. It's like a dream sequence. I feel like. He needs like a several sweaters is what's really yeah. happening. But he, he, this is That's his a, one shot. It's and he's, the beginning of the campaign. He's trying to make it count. Yeah. Uh, and then he wants to be able to wear it under a vest. And it's like, holy. Okay. <laughs> Let's just see how it goes. So we're going to do that. And I'm just going to do a plain stripe because I think yeah. that will actually look pretty sharp. But yeah. if I get down the shoulders and it looks like crap or it looks like it's going to um, buckle or whatever, then okay. we can re- reevaluate. Yeah. But yeah, I'm ready to cast this on now because oh. I got gauge. I know this coffee table is close. <laughs> Yeah, so, um, so yeah, so the funny thing is, is that he watches the podcast, yeah. like, 
very religiously. Yeah. Which is funny because he likes to know what's going on in my life and so on and then <laughs> make comments about it. <laughs> and so we, we met during COVID. So there was no like in-person dating happening no. for a while. And so, and I kind of didn't necessarily know he was watching it that yeah. religiously. Yeah. And then we were, at, so we were finally at dinner in person together in public. Yeah. And uh, I was saying, uh, you know, well, knitting can take a long time or it just depends on the project, like how complicated it is because yeah. we were just getting to know each other and he's asking questions about what I do and whatever. And so he comes out with, yeah, like Joe Bat's arm <laughs> took a super <laughs> long time. I was like, wow, <laughs> either we really talked about that for a long time or you've really, really been paying attention. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was like like joe bat's arm yeah that was quite the, i was like wow okay <laughs> not something i was actually knitting but you yeah. definitely were paying attention yeah <laughs> and thank god he didn't ask me to knit a mat yeah. oh my goodness okay <laughs> yep. could you just yeah <laughs> joe bat's arm but <laughs> Without the cover work three years. Yeah. Okay. So that's my drip. I think I'm okay. casting it on tonight. Yeah. I'm excited that I got gauge I right away. I feel that. Why? Because Just to it, see the fabric? Yeah. It's okay. really, really nice. Eh? I, so do you agree with me that the stockinette in this will probably hold up against the oh, yeah, garter okay? So. Yeah. Because I think that'll look pretty cool. Yeah. And this is a good um, texture. Yeah. Like it's a, so yeah. what do you think about the... Um, because if I went up to a five and then adjusted the size, it would be looser, right? But I feel like this is pretty perfect for a sweater you would wear under like a puppy yeah. vest or, yes. Yes. you know, out slaying dragons and yeah. that kind of thing, right? Yeah. On a white horse. <laughs> With your Irish wool found to pull anyone side. else off a Excalibur. horse in case it needs to be done. Or you yeah. run into a pack of wolves or something. <laughs> Well, you could run on your the, on your adventures. Yeah. I wouldn't put him Although up against Miles, a pack of my coyotes. Miles will take care of the coyotes. Yeah, he likes to, yeah. He's a dog herder. Yeah, and that, a sheep herder. Yeah, that Miles. Yeah. He's he's you just have he's, to take a little. He's very cowy or sheepy. Yeah, as you would say. Yeah, he's clearly he puts, done cattle penning. Puts his head down before and, you knew him. Like, yeah, he must have. He's uh he's trained like he's a jumper. So yeah, he's English uh, English. But uh, the person that owned him. I think was kind of switching him to Western. Yeah. But he's also done cross country and a bunch of, a bunch oh, of wow. other stuff. What a so. guy. Yeah. He's a real athlete that miles. He was. Versatile. Yeah. Okay. So that's the knitting project roundup. Yeah. Whew. Okay. So that's it. It's a lot. All mm-hmm. right. Shop update. Yes. Have we got a treat for you? Yeah. So let's And we were right. teasing people. I know. They, don't, they didn't know that though. Yeah. So we did repost the interview with Lizzie Ohm from Vinzler, uh, Horse, Icelandic horse right. slash Did you cashmere goat farm. Of that? No, but I just pulled that off yeah. <laughs> pretty well, eh? That was good, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Should let us know. <laughs> oh God, I should have yeah. said that. <laughs> She'll be like close. Anyway, the but... interview last Friday was yeah. from the lovely. Yes, Lizzie, Lizzie, do let me know how I did on the... yeah. <laughs> on that pronunciation that just slipped right off the tongue. Okay, so we made more another batch of local cashmere yarn yeah. with Lizzie's uh harvest from last fall 2020 2020 her 2020 crop yeah if it were as That's it were right. okay and so this has how much cashmere in it again it's 15 15 percent and 85 percent lamb's wool yeah and i mean to buy cashmere with uh, full source <laughs> information is like a really yes. special thing like we know yeah. where this cashmere was plucked from yeah <laughs> Combed, yeah, yes. combed, literally, yeah, combed by hand, yeah, uh, and we mixed it with our wool, like yeah. local island wool, yeah. and it's nice and soft. Yeah, now it's not like a full hundred percent cashmere, no. obviously, but uh, for a wool yarn with that fifteen percent, it makes a really nice. It's yarn. amazing what a difference it makes in the texture, yes. even just a fifteen percent. Yeah. So if people don't know, I don't know how we do we did we get into this in the interview. I should have rewatched her interview. I actually. did. You rewatched yeah, it. Yeah, that's how so, I knew how to say the front. Oh, okay. So <laughs> did we talk about the processing of the cashmere? Like how many times it has to go yeah. through the dehair and stuff? Yeah. Oh, shoot. Well, now I don't remember already. Okay. I did rewatch it. So I rewatched we'll recap, the whole thing. We'll recap yeah. here anyway. So cashmere, um, 
the cashmere goats are double coated. Yeah. So there's the under under down, which is I the don't think we talked cashmere. about it in the interview. I think okay. we talked about it like our in our part. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then they have guard hairs. So yes. the the goats actually kind of um, I think they're kind of like from what I understand they're kind of like the angora rabbits. They yeah. bolt. And you have she to did talk the, about all that and that yeah. the guard hair it'll be more guard hair if you comb it at the wrong That's time. Right. So yeah. it's up to her to make sure that she <laughs> combs it at the right right time. But even even if you time it perfectly, you're always going to get some guard hair. Right. So when we do it, we have to um, there we have a fiber separator which we put all our yarns through. But when you're doing cashmere, you have to put it through. I think Ken did it five times. So that gets all the guard hair, more, all the guard hair. Mm-hmm. Now our machine is not as robust as like a commercial. It's not precise. Big mill. It's not <laughs> yeah. really precise. So every now and then you might find uh, a little guard, what well, like right there, but you'll know right away because they don't take up the the dye. Yeah. But there I don't have seen many. No, there's not many. The other thing is if uh, like you don't want to waste the regular the cashmere itself yeah. either. So yeah. depending on how you set it, you could either take out not enough or and take they're out not, too much. And they're not really hard. Like they're not uh, you probably if we hadn't just talked about it, you probably wouldn't even no, notice. I didn't it. even know, notice yeah. when I dyed it. But so yeah. um, it's a three ply. Yeah. Two hundred and fifty yards. Yeah. For eighty five grams. Yep. And you did a special dye. I did. Like, people are going to be like, can she please get off the Easter egg colors? But I can't help it. <laughs> so I did a special um, speckled version, and then I picked some other colors. So we'll just go through what I've done. So we're calling this hyacinth. Mm-hmm. Hyacinth is one of my favorite flowers. So they're an early spring flower. An early spring. Oh, I'm all about the early spring flowers. Spring. <laughs> Let me tell you, I planted some snowdrops last fall. It would blow your mind how many snowdrops. Because <laughs> it's just like, and I planted them right next to the foundation. So that, like, yeah. the first sign of any warming yeah. those little snowdrops will come up and like make my world yeah um so a hyacinth is kind of like that i have a question to people who love hyacinths and have them i feel like they're kind of more like a biannual bian biannual take a flower like they don't really come up perennial year. years and years and years and years and years and years i feel like they kind of burn out after a few years maybe or something eats the bulb yeah, but let me know if you're a hyacinth person because yeah. mine are all gone now. Yeah, I need to plant some more. The skunk probably ate them. <sighs> Ernest, that skunk. <laughs> um, so hyacinth, right? So just let so me open this people, up and show. If people uh, ordered the small amount that we had a year ago from the 2019 crop, it looks similar to the petals, but it's not the same. No. Yeah. It's got different colors in it. Yeah. Um, I added actually, this has two more colors in it than the petals. Right. And this is the yarn that I knit the My Birds of a Feather. This is shop. the yarn. Yeah. Yeah. But not in this color. No. Colorway. Yeah. So this is the hyacinth sort of speckly, but you know, we don't do speckle. We don't throw loose powder around our dye studio. Yeah. Um, we splash it on. Yeah. Um, so it, we never get those tight little specks of yeah. color. We'll never, but this is what I consider a speckled for us. Right. Um, and that's as speckled as we're going to get because I just don't like blowing dye powder all over the place. Oh, right. And it's very expensive because it's organic dye that we use. Mm-hmm. Um, we also did it in Seagull because there's nothing like a nice gray cashmere. Yeah. Um, and Lizzie actually has a gray buck. Yes. Um, and so there is some gray yeah. in here, but it wasn't enough to have a natural gray. No. So we did two batches. We did a white white one, and then we used the gray, uh, gray, but it was pretty light. Yeah, because 15% and then... Yeah. Yeah. So it's... Uh, anyway. Yeah. It gave us the idea for the gray. Yeah. I did crocus <laughs> because yeah. um, a lot of people asked, or a few people asked for crocus in the Iota Bunny mm-hmm. instead of periwinkle, which right. I did last time. And so I've given the crocus people some crocus cashmere. Yeah. This is like a lighter version of amethyst brooch, Mm -hmm. which I'll just call purple because it's not (laughs) amethyst brooch. No. It's not as dark. No. Um, And these are all meant to match, right? So you can buy one and mix it with a solid in case you want to do something like a sweater with a yoke in it. Mm -hmm. And then this is called rosy cheeks. Mm -hmm. It's a light pink. And this has kind of a weird name, but we'll just roll with it. And this is called Trondheim blue. (laughs) So basically when I was doing the Trondheim mitten kit, I had to custom... Uh, like figure out the color to right. match the yarn that was in the pattern that right. wasn't ours. Right. Um, and so I just call it Trondheim Blue because it's a blue I developed to mimic the Trondheim um, mitten. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the Cambornia mittens that have a color similar to this. Right. And we love it. And it's lovely. Yeah. And I actually there's some lopi coming up, and I'm think I'm gonna dye it oh. this color. I okay. really wanted a lopi in this color for yeah. a long time. 
Uh, it'll be an over dye, but I think yes. it'll still be amazing. Mm-hmm. So Trondheim blue, rosy cheeks. I'll just call it amethyst instead of amethyst brooch. <laughs> Crocus, seagull, and hyacinth. Yeah. And I hate to say this every time, but there's not a lot. <laughs> and I went a little crazy with the colors, so there's really not a lot of each. Yeah. Most of what we have, the most of, are these two because mm-hmm. I thought they'd be the most popular. And uh, then there's a few of these each. For accents. Yeah. We do have a little bit of uh, blooming point, point lace, lace left. Yeah. Right? So. so I feel like people, if they watch later, they assume that the special editions are gone. But there's right. actually quite a bit of blooming point lace left. And yeah. I'll just put it up here again. Yeah. Um, and that's a really nice yarn, too. Yeah. And uh, if you've received it since last episode, mm-hmm. um, let us know in the comments how you're liking it. Yeah. And maybe others will be encouraged to give it a try. Um, we do know, no, it's not, it wasn't spun by us. So it's yeah. not a fleece and harmony, um, spin. It wasn't yeah. spun in our mill. So therefore it's not locally produced no. like this one. Yeah. Um, but it is a really nice yarn mm-hmm. if you wanted a nice drapey shawl. Mm-hmm. Um, but this so is we, so, this is, uh, it's, um, I don't know how, like all our yarns are squishy. Yeah. But this is really nice. I'm not going to lie. Because it's really hard to give this to someone else. <laughs> Like, I could easily, <laughs> I mean, like, I was like, I should just knit the boyfriend sweater out of this. Oh, I really like it. Wow. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's really nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. Anyway, right. you guys enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't feel bad. We'll make, yes, we can make don't more. Feel bad. <laughs> no, yeah. no, no. Lizzie is uh, starting to calm within the next yeah. month or so anyway. So there's... Or oh, she already sent a big bag. Yeah. 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 So there could be Picture. more cashmere coming, not another year from now, but a little yeah. bit sooner. Yeah. Because this, we had stored it for a bit. Yes, we yeah. did. Yeah. So anyway, That's it's it. really nice. That's it. Yeah. It really <laughs> nice. Oh, dear. Okay. So that's, we're calling that Celtic cashmere. Right. Because Celtic, it's, it's not... Nova no Scotia. sense doing it in an island name no. when it was... The cashmere is from Nova Scotia. Yeah. All right. So other shop update stuff. So we all have some new things from Jewel Designs, which is a company we just love. Their yes. stuff is beautiful. Yeah. So we've got lots of shawl pins and stuff. Yeah, and, already. But yeah. we've branched out a bit and gotten some new stuff. Yeah. So tell us about what we've got here. What are we going to do first? Well, the one you're wearing. Oh, okay. I was going to say this is okay. the easiest. Okay, go ahead. So she does make um, shawl sticks as well I as shawl I can put one on. Okay. <laughs> you have to be wearing it like Mr. Dress Up. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so the shawl sticks. We have a hummingbird and we have a dragonfly. And now she's come up with a sea turtle. Yeah. Super cute. And I really don't think we've shown this before. We've had no. them for a while, but they're yeah. adorable. Like, look at them yeah. just swimming along there yeah. with his little feet out behind. Yeah. I mean, so cute. And so the way sea turtles, turtles are designed are, the, your fabric goes up underneath. Yeah. We've talked about so that So it looks before. like he's just perched here. Yeah. I mean, exactly. he's literally swimming. Yeah. 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 In the so open, open really ocean. Cute. So that's new. Sea that's turtle. New yeah. Thing. So we have that. And then we have these cool things, which aren't n- that new, but this is the first time we've had them. So okay. it's a shawl pin. Right. But um, it's called a lock, um, I think she calls it lock clip. Okay. And so what you have is um, this little scrolly part. Which, which is, is a, technically a bale, right? Yeah. yeah. No, no, this well, is the, it's like the shawl pin. In. Right, yeah. okay. And then you've got a stick, so like a regular shawl pin so right. far. Except that the little charm actually slides off. Okay. Slides yep. off. <laughs> and you can change it. Yeah. So it comes apart like this. Yeah. So this is the dragonfly. Yeah. And this is the hummingbird. Yeah. So we started with these two. Yeah. And it also comes in the bees and the monarch butterflies. Yeah. Yeah. So you can buy the, the shawl stick with the attachment and one charm. And then you can add all the other charms separately. Yeah. Okay. So, so it's mix and match once you have purchased this and this. Yeah. These that you can purchase individually. Yeah. So we didn't order them all right off the bat, but I am going to list them all on pre-order because what I don't want to have happen is somebody like, oh, I want the whole collection. Right. And then we've only got the dragonfly yeah. and the hummingbird listed. So I'll show in the listing what's sort of like a pre-order. You'll have to wait until we get our order yeah. in. Um, but I just want to make them all available because... If I was going to order one, I would yeah. want to get the whatever term I wanted at yes. the same time, right? Yeah. So we'll list all of them. All right. And uh, I'll note where one's a pre-order and one's yeah. not. It's like they're really cute and smart. Yeah. Yeah. Really fun thing to do. Yeah. 
So if you're feeling like a hummingbird, you can wear your hummingbird. If you're feeling like a dragonfly, you can wear your dragonfly. But you only have to buy the whole rig <laughs> once. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I hope then, that's clear. Yeah. So I had to just put this on backwards. So I just want to make sure that okay. I put it back. And then the other thing is, not to get even more confused. That's okay. <laughs> um, it's a puzzle. Yeah, it <laughs> also serves as a puzzle if you're having yeah. a quiet night at home. Yeah. Um, this can go on your, your shawl cuff. Yes. Yeah, so if you remember the gray cuff that I wear as a bracelet, but it's actually a shawl cuff, and I'll show a picture here. Yeah. You can also attach the ends of the cuff, because I yeah. know some of you had already bought that, and then put this yes. on that. And hold it together. Yeah, so yeah. it's very versatile. Yeah. It's very cool, this little system. Yeah. I really like it. I don't yeah. know how we haven't done this before, but... We just got it. No, I know we did. Oh. But how did we not... Oh, she had them before. Yeah. yeah she's had them for How did we miss it? Yeah. Yeah. I can't fix that. What? No, okay. it's just I keep putting it's up it inside on. out. I know. I know. So inside out. I can't, I, can't, <laughs> I can't stand it. Okay. It's because it twists around. Right. You got it this time. Do you think? No, I don't know. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> 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 it's like those exercises to keep your mind sharp. Yeah, that's it. Okay. okay. <laughs> you get to a certain age, you really want to oh, test boy. yourself okay, on some of this go. stuff. Okay. Yeah. So I hope that's clear, but if you have any questions, Our right mother us. spells pencil backwards. Yeah. All the time. I don't know if I can do that. I'm not going to try it on camera. <laughs> that's for sure. My secret will be revealed. Yeah. Um, well, I see an EP. <laughs> She's probably got it memorized by now. <laughs> okay, that's think, not the point, Mom. And I think if they if they've caught catch anyway, she's not like she it, she actually knew that that was the test because right. when our grandfather yeah. had our grandfather had dementia, that was one of the things that they they did. So ever since she was at the appointment with him, she made sure that she knew all the answers to the right. test. And hopefully, they've come up with a different test by now. They trick her sometimes, and yeah. she's, they you also will use world. Oh. Backwards. I'd have to think. Yeah. Okay, let's not try it. <laughs> okay. So that's but these. <laughs> and these are called, what do they call them? Lock clasp. Of course, I picked them up. Charm one. shawl pins or something. Charm lock shawl pin. Yeah. Okay. Filigree. Oh, oh, Lordy. There goes the stick. Someone will stick one. Okay, that's okay. okay. Get that later. Okay. The other, these I'm super excited about. Yeah, you didn't know that I ordered these. I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> Life is full of surprises for me, I'll tell you. <laughs> okay. So, um, she, the, there is also um, clasps. So, there you have the leather clasps that you, you might have seen. We have them on our website that you can put on, screw your, on. your screw on clasp. Closures. For, closures, right. Yeah. So, these are screw on buttons. So, yeah. on your knit cardigan. Look at me go. Is fine motor skills a thing? Yeah. In the test. <laughs> so the way that these work oh God. is that you have the pewter button and then you have this little stopper oh, that I goes think it's at easier the back. to put this through first. There yeah. we go. All right. <laughs> this uh, work smarter, not harder. Okay. I'm I'm actually putting a button on my thing right now. Yeah. Like, isn't right. that amazing? Oh, yeah. And then I can take it off and put it on another garment later. Right. So Honestly, for cardigans Who hasn't stuff, thought of this? Yeah. Look at that. So you have this little um, disc that goes in the back. So you put the the um, the screw through your garment, like Jennifer just demonstrated, right. on, the, on the back with this, sorry, the the disc. This goes in. The disc I goes didn't do it that way, but. Like that. Yeah. And then you just put that through your knit stitches. And then you just take your button. I don't know. Hopefully this is in the frame of the, cat, the camera. Yeah, it will be. You just take your... Oh, you have to get it. Don't cross thread it. Right. My sweater is <laughs> <laughs> now <laughs> stuck in it. Yeah. Now, can I ask why it says horseshoe on the bottom of this? I have no idea. Oh, well, that's a mystery. Are they made out of recycled horseshoes? I don't know. I think they're pewter. Well, it says horseshoe on the back. I don't know they're, what that means. They're uh, that was the chair creaking. Okay. There was just. <laughs> It wasn't me. I've heard nothing. I... <laughs> Excuse yourself. Okay. I don't have to. It was the chair. I got nervous. <laughs> oh, my God. It was the chair. Now I have mohair in my eye. Okay. Things are there. falling apart. There okay. 
It would be perfect for this sweater, truthfully. Let me... This is not the right spot for the button. No, but, oh, but it probably works with that buttonhole. Yeah, look. Amazing. I'm sorry. I think that's amazing. Yeah. And you know there's a worldwide shortage of attractive buttons. Yes. Quality buttons look out there. That. So you can just put these on whatever you're wearing. Yeah. Buy one set of buttons. Yeah. Amazing. I love it. Like, I'm totally into it. I had no idea we had these. <laughs> I'm like like a kid on Christmas morning with this. And then I'm just going to show, like, you just take it back off. Yeah. So you could have a set. Yeah. I mean, it has to fit the buttonhole, clearly. Right. I'm dying so to know these are this one says inch. horseshoe on the bottom. It does say horseshoe. I don't know. We'll have to ask her. Hmm. So this is the one inch one. Right. The small one. Okay. And the one that Jen had. Which would be great, like, as a feature button on the top. Yeah. You could put it on a hat as a yeah, brooch or anything. Yeah, that's a one and a half inch. Okay. So they come in... Wow, the... there's quite a big difference between one and one. I and know. One. It's amazing. And these are the only two sizes you can yeah. get. Okay. Super cool. I love super smart stuff like this. Yeah. Neat. Okay. It's all really cool. Awesome. Thank then you, you saw we just applied our buttons on our And then take them like back off. Did. Yeah. Now, if I had had that on my Sunday card, again, I wouldn't be missing two buttons yeah. right now. <laughs> Okay. The other thing is, uh, 10 Years in the Making is back in stock in a big way. We have yeah. lots of them now. Yeah. Sam's just wondering what the heck we're doing over here. Yeah, he is. <laughs> yes. he, Sam's a man. He's always like, you ladies must be doing something right. Yeah. <laughs> we're always getting more books. Um, yeah. And what we didn't, I think we we did do a slideshow with the book before we had the physical book. I think this is the first time we've remembered to bring the physical book right. with us. Right. Because we kept forgetting. But one thing I want to point out is there is some reissuing of classic Kate designs in here. Mm-hmm. So when I did the slideshow, I kind of showed um, the new designs yeah. that are in the book. But it also contains Carbeth, yeah. which has got to be one of her most popular designs ever. Um, the Carbeth cardigan, and it's got the owl sweater in here, which was her first, her first big breakthrough design. Yeah, um, that sort of put her on the map as a designer. And if I can find it, I plan on showing it. And you do get a code inside your book um, for downloads as well. Yes, to download it. Poor desperate husband was looking for the yes. book on for Valentine's <laughs> Day, but only <laughs> let us know it was urgent. The day before. Yeah. <laughs> and we're like, here's the download code that comes with your book. Yeah. So this owl yoke um, sweater. Mm-hmm. I can show a better picture. But yeah, yeah, that's in here too. So there's some classic Kate um, reissues. And then yeah. there's um, new patterns. New pa- many new patterns as yeah. well. So that's why it's called 10 Years in the Making, of yeah. course. Because it goes back through her 10-year history as a, right. as a knitwear designer. Yeah. And um, for sure, very well-written patterns. Uh-huh. Perfect to the letter. Um, and it's a lovely book and it's made out of lovely stock and mm-hmm. it's just beautiful. Mm-hmm. So we've sold quite a few already, but we have lots more and you won't have to wait for them. I think this time. is our third order. Yeah. Yeah. So it's been really popular and I can understand yeah. why. Yeah. Uh, and then another thing that came up was this. Yes. So I don't know. The, I think that Arna and Carlos and I have uh, the mind meld happening. Yeah, must because be. of it. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I reordered. I reordered um, the. Uh, or I had restocked the Norwegian knitting design. Yeah, and then they talked about it on the podcast. They talked about that. They were already book. on yeah. their way here. Yeah. so we still we have lots of those left too, and then we um, then the, I restocked. Make your own idea, idea book, and yeah. they talked about it on their yeah. on their podcast. Yeah, the, after I'd ordered them, so we linked it to it in the newsletter. And if yeah. you have time to read and browse a book, which I unfortunately do not these days, this is just this is like a fun. I don't know. It's kind of like if you were to do scrapbooking, but you didn't actually have to do the work. Yeah. <laughs> like you can just live vicariously through their scrapbooking efforts. Yeah. <laughs> so what they, they, this is, they talk about their art journals, yes. which is what they, so if you've seen that podcast, it was one of their Sunday, was it sitting And they, they had, had a shelf of like a gazillion of them yeah, behind Yeah, so them. these are, they had 20 years of their design careers and they always start with this book and they literally make the book, the yeah, pages. Yeah, like they're now like binding the book. Yeah, that's it. So they it's teach you how to do that. It's fascinating. So they call it an art journal, but it is actually this idea book is, yeah. is how to make the book like what? Uh, yeah, like he's making a book cover. Yeah, to see, like crazy. I would yeah. be into the like the vintage wallpaper. Like, yeah, so it's amazing. If you watch that, um, if you watch that podcast that they've done, he uh, he shows how he just takes paper that he likes and he binds it into the book, and then he glues over all his yeah. inspiration. He's sewing over top the book together. Yeah, 
Yeah. I mean, I, that's just so... What a life to be able to, like, indulge your creativity yeah. to that degree. Yeah. Where you're going to actually sew the paper together yourself yeah. and then create this amazing thing. Like, bullet right. journalers, step aside. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Like, it's... I mean, that's an amazing talent, too. If you have yeah. a really nice bullet journal. I tried it. Utter disaster. Oh. I'm terrible. Anyway, <laughs> Mine they, was so ugly. I they showed sure. what They actually... It's really interesting because they showed one that they couldn't open and actually show it because it was the one that they're working on their next Rowan um, project. Right. In. So yeah. they do, they do, they have a whole pile of magazines and stuff that they, that they keep and they cut, they have magazines that they keep to keep. And then they have magazines that they actually keep because they like the imagery in it and they yeah. cut from them and put them in the art journals. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Like I, it's, it's just so cool. Yeah. You kind of like if you don't have time to do it yourself, you can really like indulge your passion for it just by looking through this yeah. book and reading about the process and yeah, pretty cool stuff. You can mm-hmm. tell I'm a little bit jealous, <laughs> but I feel like if I tried to put one together, it just would not be as artful as what they've done here. Well, I guess you just would practice. Anyway, it's really funny. I'll tell you that somebody, asked, one of our customers, asked us like, is had... this the first incarnation of your Maybe. stay? Yeah, it might be. So neat. Yeah. So cool. Might All right. Be. Good. So they, uh, a customer asked us to order this. So I said, no problem. And I thought, make your own idea book. I didn't know what it, like how to think about <laughs> ideas. Is that what it is? Like, what? <laughs> no idea. And then when we got it, I was just like, oh, okay. So it's like super, yeah. cool. literally, you make your own. <laughs> make your own idea book. No, you make your own idea yeah. book. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and then when they, they explained their whole process on their podcast, it was even yeah. cooler. Yeah. So we'll link to the episode where they go through it. It's kind of, it kind of makes it like a... Uh, an archive of all of their ideas. Like their I know. Artistic... It's an incredible archive. Like yeah. It's fascinating. And they, they show uh, a couple of them in the podcast, or they talk about them specifically, how they, they just go back. If they're working, have to get like inspiration for a project, they just go back and look at the old the older books that they have yeah. and they had them I think he said they have them every every one that they've made for 20 years it's amazing yeah it's I think amazing. it's totally fascinating anyway we have that in yeah stock. so the yeah so <laughs> um I think it's so cool like what a like a an archive or like a remembrance of a creative life right yeah like it's really cool yeah I mean, yeah. they're incredibly talented. Yes, they are. Yeah. They are, yeah. We were so lucky to get to do that event with them. Yeah. Um, I feel really privileged all the time. Every time we get to know a little bit more about them, yeah. I'm like more like, wow, we yeah. were really lucky to get them here. Yeah. Uh, on, just even on Zoom in yeah. Prince Edward Island. So exactly. I'm sure everybody who <clears throat> attended that event yeah. would concur. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. So that's fun. Okay. Yeah. Then one other small note. Someone had asked about the four-inch Chiagu complete set of needles. Right. I have no idea where you asked about it. I have looked <laughs> and searched for your message, but we did order it in. Right. Um, and it's listed now. And I personally want the four-inch one because I find the five-inch... I mean, why not have a shorter needle tip? If you could, if you can make your needle round more flexible than less, yeah. in my mind... That's always better. Mm-hmm. But apparently the five inch are the hot sellers. Yeah, I like the five inch because the way that I hold my needle, it's You my, need that I leverage on that the end. Hold, okay, yeah. I don't. Yeah. So even with my giant <laughs> hands. Um so we do have not a lot, but I'm hoping that this reaches the person who asked for yes, it. We have one. And you get on and order it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's here. And if you're wondering, I think she we also can order more if there's yeah, a I think she also asked the question, like what what is the difference and I'm not sure but for me yeah. it's just to create like it's kind of like why you want shorties right yeah like it's not as short as a shorty but it does allow more of your round to be cable mm-hmm. versus needle tip mm-hmm. and uh, I think that comes in quite handy when you're going around tight circles yeah so I actually really want I'm coveting the four inch set but since we've already donated one five inch complete set to my efforts <laughs> I'm not sure when I'm going to feel justified in taking another whole four inch one <laughs> but uh, <laughs> uh we don't mind bringing them in if there's a yeah but we were when we started carrying chiago yeah we, we were told the five yes. inches definitely but literally i cannot find the person who asked yeah. for it no. so i'm hoping that this reaches you and you know we now have it yeah or she's probably already bought it somewhere else yeah. poor, poor woman <laughs> yeah anyway all right 
So that's the shop update. Okay. Uh, ask us anything. We have some ask us anything. This is going to be a long episode. Yeah. Okay. You might want to go grab a cup of coffee. <laughs> have a seat. Yeah, have a seat. <laughs> okay. This is a really good question. My coffee's ice cold. Yeah. Okay. This is a really good question. So we're going to answer it thoroughly. I have mm-hmm. to sit back because my neck is starting to get stiff. I know. It's hard to end. perch up like that. Yeah. Okay. We're now more, right. the more laid back portion. Yeah. Okay. So it's the change in the lighting. <laughs> we just had to turn the lights on because we've yeah. been here uh, a long, long time. enough now. The sun is starting to uh, dip down below yeah. the horizon. So Shayna. Yes. Ask us anything. Right. Why does yarn pill? Wow, Shana, good question. <sighs> we wish we knew. Yeah, no, just we do know. Yeah. <laughs> we do know. So let us enlighten you. I'm wondering if we, maybe we should ask the, or do the other questions first because they're a little bit faster, or do you want to do Sure, let's pill? do the other ones okay. first. Okay. Sorry, Shana, I have to hang on. So okay. coming up, why does yarn pill? Right. But we have a couple you got to stay till the first. end. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Nancy K2 right. asked... Do you recommend Coco Knit Sweater right. Knitting Book and Workbook? I've knit it for years, and wow, I'm really doing good if I can read this. Oh, and you don't lately, have your glasses no, on. Okay, I'll been, read the question. Okay. okay. <laughs> Do we recommend the Coco Knit Sweater Knitting Book and Workbook yes. in terms of the fact that she's been knitting for years and lately have been disappointed with the garments, mainly due to the fit? That's right. So does it help you fit your garments better, learning that method? Yes. Yes, it does. Okay. <laughs> Uh, yes, I, that is the question. That's the answer to that. <laughs> okay. No, we're going to We're going to explain all of that one. And the reason why it's not it's not um the method is not like some kind of sophisticated um fitting course or whatever, but what it does very well is help you to understand construction. The construction yeah. of a sweater. And I learned a lot. Mm-hmm. So I knit... Which is saying a lot because you you were already fitting your garments pretty well before you ever used yeah. the Coco Knits workbook. Yes. Right. Yeah. But you still found it added to your yes. knowledge. Yes, yeah. I did. So okay. um, I knit the Emma. Mm-hmm. And um, the construction, the shoulder construction is pretty unique to Coco Knits. So that's... Um, that's and I was wearing my Emma the other day and I was looking at it and I was I think I might knit another one because mm-hmm. I figured out something that would be better. My shoulders are quite broad and mm-hmm. it's just a little bit skimpy on the shoulder. Okay. But you have the after you've knit one of those sweaters and I think Emma is one of the kind of like the real beginner mm-hmm. ones. Um, you understand what the construction of a of a top down sweater is and they're very very precise about where um, how to fit for your body type. Mm-hmm. So there's a whole section. Lots of good knowledge in there about that alone. Yes. So the whole section of it is about fitting a sweater and picking the right pattern for your body type or adapting a pattern for your body type. Mm -hmm. And that was really um, kind of really the penny dropped for me when I, when I went through that whole process and I learned, I learned a lot. Mm -hmm. And she, the way that she explains as well, like you're decreasing and the techniques for making one and, mm-hmm. you know, lots of people, me included, when we start knitting and it says make one, you're kind of loosey-goosey. She's you a brilliant know. technical knitter, yes. Julie. Yes. Yeah. Brilliant. Yes. You really learn a lot. Yeah. Would I knit all my sweaters using that? You can use the journal to um, apply the method to other patterns yeah. as well. So that's that's... You, you can do that. And would I knit every sweater like as a top down? No, because I do like seaming. Mm-hmm. But what I learned from the, the whole method is about how to fit a garment to my body type. And mm-hmm. she goes through all the body types. I <laughs> think your dog just rolled off the bed. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, the house is not coming down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, She's heavy. Yeah, you learn you learn a lot about sweater construction. Yeah. And the patterns in it are fantastic. And we've too. sold a ton of those books. Oh, yeah. Like a, a yeah. ton. Probably because books were so heavy. A literal ton. Yes. Almost. And uh, no one has ever said, no. oh, we've only gotten ever gotten positive feedback. Yeah. About, and Jennifer Hicks is on it now. She just yeah. did one using it, I think. And yeah. uh, I, I think it's an amazing... Uh, like the technical knowledge in the book, just aside from the method, and, is worth. And the patterns yeah. are great too. But yeah. The, there's just, it's an overall kind of like if you know how to knit and you want to improve your knitting right. and take it up a notch, take it up a notch, then it's really valuable. And yeah. she's really, Julie's really smart. Yeah. Like about, like you said, her technical. Yeah. 
expertise and um, you you understand how it works in the pattern as well so for me a lot of things came together mm-hmm. when I did that mm-hmm. so. or if you were considering developing the skills to be able to design a sweater would it help with that well, well it must. yes because you can learn about yeah. fit yeah and uh, she was on a, an episode of Fruity Knitting fairly recently, yes. so we'll link to that episode yeah. in the show notes as well, so you can yeah. watch Julie talk about it herself. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, we're obviously huge Coco f- Knits yeah. fans. Yeah. Julie has never and will never likely do anything wrong in our eyes. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> but we've sold a lot of the books, and yeah. people are always and the with journal, them. the journal that goes with it. So you get a page in the book that is like a page that's in the journal. So if you don't buy the journal you do have a page that you can use a worksheet in the uh, the method book but um, the journal is good because what you do learn is that you could put enter all of the increases and decreases and everything of other patterns not even it doesn't have to be a coconuts pattern Mm -hmm. into that journal and what happens is you've got your whole pattern that you can just carry around on one page and you know exactly like how many yeah that's pretty amazing yeah so I think Jennifer Hicks is finding that really right. valuable. Yeah. So she, I mean, yeah, I'd want to have the journal. Yeah. Because why not? Yeah. Like it's it's not that expensive, and then you have you know all your yeah. stuff together, and then if you wanted to recreate that, re knit that design later, it's yeah. all there for you. All your notes, all yeah. your adjustments are on there, and you just have everything all on yeah. that one page to. It's a pretty to cool follow. concept. Yeah. It's okay. A good, a good concept. So I hope so. that answers your question. Yeah. Nancy. Yeah. And then Rita J.Y. is up yeah. next. She's asking about shearing. Can yeah. we talk about our shearing? Um, is it almost shearing season? Yes. Although people do shear at different times of the year. Right. Here yeah. it's almost shearing yeah. for us. <laughs> um, how many days does it take to shear all of the sheep? Thankfully, only one, Rita. Long, one long day. <laughs> Very long day. Yeah. Although it'll be shorter this year because our shearer now has trained up a helper. Yeah. Thank goodness. Yeah. Uh, and we only have about 160 sheep to do this year, probably. No, no, that, not, that not that many. many. Oh, good. No. I'll have to update Amber then. Oh, okay. <laughs> She's prepared for 160. No, I don't know. I don't know it's how many. more like 130 or 120. Oh, not that different. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, it takes a while to get through them all because each sheep is probably three minutes and then you have to catch yeah. them and whatnot and shoo them out and clean the board and all that kind yeah. of stuff. But we do have two shearers coming out this year, so right. that's going to be fun. Um, will the babies from last spring... Well, they were actually from last summer. Right. Uh, they weren't born until August. I guess they were made in spring. Yeah. But they were finished <laughs> in August. Yeah. Um, they will be shorn, but they don't have a ton of fleece on them. No. And in terms of shearing season, so some people... The, like, sh- it's shocking to me that in some circles, a centimeter of fleece is considered full fleece. Like, yeah. that's enough to insulate the animal. Yeah. Um, but ours probably have about this much yeah. on them right now. So you can do it one of two ways. Either you can do it before winter really hits so that yeah. they have a chance to grow some back. Right. Or you can do it in the spring yeah. bef- after winter has really hit the hardest. Although yeah. inevitably we will shear and then it will go down to minus 40 for what, no reason whatsoever yeah. in the middle of April. What happens is she shears in her shirt sleeves. Yeah. And then the next day the it'll next be minus day. 25 yeah. and all the sheep are naked. Yeah. And they all have to sleep inside for two weeks. Yeah. Like inevitably that's what will happen. <laughs> But we are doing it a tiny bit later this yes. year. We typically have always, I think, always shorn on around St. Patrick's Day. Day. Whatever the weekend is. Yeah, around. but I mean, that's pretty early. So yeah. we have to keep them in on cold days. Um, they are shorn fairly close. Yeah. You can shear them longer with what's, what's known as a winter as comb. a um, winter comb, which would just basically have a thicker guard on it so yeah. that the blade doesn't go as close to the skin. Yeah. Um, but typically, if you're in the wool business... You're going to do all that work. You want as much wool to come off as possible. Yeah. But um, even with the winter comb, it's not really enough. It's not to, enough. It's not no. for our weather. Yeah. Our, it might be good in England. But, but we're going to do it the first weekend of April. Yeah. So, of course, there'll be footage and we'll be talking about it after that mm-hmm. uh, in the episode following that. Uh, and we won't use a winter comb. They'll be shorn quite close. But hopefully the weather is warmed up enough that we don't have to keep them inside for yeah. too long. Because the sheep really don't want to be inside. No. Um, but, yeah, it only has to grow back. Seven millimeters, actually, yeah. I think. Like, and not even a centimeter. And yeah. they're considered sort of protected from the weather. Yeah. Like, that's pretty amazing. And Wool uh, is pretty amazing. It is. And, and also interesting is they don't recommend that you shear in the mid, like, blazing hot summer either. No, because it's insulation. Yes. Like, you have to think of it as insulation. So mm-hmm. that makes sense. Like, if you push... Um, you know, whatever you consider full fleece, let's, let's even say it was like a full centimeter yeah. or two centimeters even. Yeah. So if you insulate your house and you put a bat in, yeah. 
and then you put a second bat and then you put a third bat you're yeah. really getting diminishing returns on that yeah. extra thickness right mm-hmm. so as long as it's keeping all the heat in yeah who why do yeah. you need to add more bats right like so it's pretty cool that they'll um, actually be able to regulate their temperature quite well with that small amount yeah um, but in the summer, if you take off all their wool and if they don't have the insulation going the other way, yeah, and um, they do get sunburned. Oh yes, so because yeah. their skin is like pinky, pinky <laughs> <and> pristine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's really like yeah, like they pink. develop freckles on their ears yeah. and like they do sustain sun damage from UV rays, yeah. like for sure. Yeah. So yeah. if you shear off all of their wool and you've got bl- blistering hot weather, yeah. they'll get sunburned. Yeah. I mean, we always make sure they have shade in the yeah. hedgerow, but if a sheep is stuck out in a field with no, I mean, we've we've had the odd ones who obviously wouldn't go into shelter that have had like fairly severe sunburn yeah. on their ears. Yeah. Uh, and it all kind of crusts up and they yeah. don't just seem like to care, a, but yeah. just like a, like a, it's a sunburn. Like a sunburn. Yeah. And then it all freckles over and yeah. they kind of like yeah. develop a little bit more um, resistance to mm-hmm. it. But yeah, their skin needs to be protected as well. Yeah. And it acts as insulation, same as your home. So yeah. if you're cool, it keeps you cool. Mm-hmm. If you're need to be warmer, it keeps you warm. <clears throat> basically just maintains a healthy body temperature yeah. inside that little package right right <laughs> and uh so that's why you don't you do it at certain times of the year yeah <clears throat> i'm gonna lose, lose my voice now so i yeah. hope that answers your question so, so we are doing it a little bit later this year like i said because we don't want to battle the weather quite as yeah. much now we're able to do that this time because we're not lambing <laughs> so we used to have to do it earlier yeah because you can't muscle around a sheep that's like five months pregnant yeah you have to do it early enough that it won't affect um the babies that they're carrying or stress or stress them out yeah that close to delivering yeah so we used to have to do it to kind of beat the the lambing deadline so that they had a full month before they lambed out um in between that stressful day and then their gestation period ending yeah um but now we can do whatever yeah and yeah. you want them shorn usually before they lamb because it makes it easier for the lambs yes. to find the teats and yeah. it's cleaner. Yeah. And oh, yeah. Like you that. definitely want the fleece off before yeah. lambing. That's yeah. a hot mess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, think of yourself. Yeah. If you were wearing all that wool yeah. and then gave birth. Yeah. Cleaner's better. Yeah. For everybody. <laughs> right. For everyone involved. And uh, lambs will. They'll suck they're, wool. They've got good instincts, but they're not that bright. Yeah. So they will suck wool and think that they're getting milk out of it. Yeah. Or and trying, they're, they're wasting their energy. Yeah. And wool. they're getting dirt and yeah. it's not keeping them warm and it's yeah. not, you know, so you want everything to be clean and so that those teats are like the only thing you could possibly think you should be sucking on. <laughs> this has really gone down a really graphic road. Yeah. Should have done a <laughs> warning. Yeah. Teat talk coming yeah. up. <laughs> Um, but teats are part of farm life. Yeah. You live and die by the teat. Yeah. Right. <laughs> if you right. raise livestock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's just the way it is. All right. All right. So now we're going to talk about why does yarn pill. Okay. Good. All right. So here we are. So yarn pills, all yarn or all fiber spun into yarn has the potential to pill. But some pills more than others. Yeah. Okay. So here's what causes a pill and then you'll understand why. So if there's little ends of the fiber sticking out after the yarn is spun, those ends get rubbed and because it's a a fiber, it'll start to felt on top of the fabric or create little balls. Into a ball, yeah. Into a little ball. So the way that your yarn can be resistant to pilling is if the, the staple length of the fiber, whatever it is, this goes for acrylics and stuff as well, but what you, the fiber that you're spinning, if it's um, the staple is caught up in the twist of the yarn, uh, in at a good like a good tightness, then your yarn will be resistant to pilling. Mm-hmm. Or it would only pill every three inches instead that's, of every inch. That's right. Yeah, it's so, the ends. So if you have to spin short fibers because sometimes you want to spin short fibers. The tighter you spin them, the more resistant the fat, the yarn will be to pilling. If you're spinning long fibers, you don't really need to worry worry about it. And the other bad news is that soft, the softer and finer the fiber, the easier it is to pill as well. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, would that be because the ends are just so fine they knit up? 
more easily. Yeah, or, I think they, the, or they're probably they're just not rubbed. as coarse. It's yeah, kind of like exactly. trying to tie a shoelace in a tight knot or a piece of hair, like or yeah. a piece of um, like really fine floss in a tight yeah. knot. The knot's going to be much tighter on the yes, floss than it right. would be in the on the coarser fiber. So things to look for, like so, for example, um, cashmere can when you buy um you know a really high quality cashmere sweater they're using longer fiber usually mm-hmm. if you're buying you know when you see cashmere sweaters for 29.95 cashmere seconds yeah they're the seconds so they're shorter fibers they will have a tendency to pill more in general mm-hmm. because the if the shorter the fiber the tighter the twist has to be and then then the yarn is not doesn't have as much body and stuff uh-huh. as well so and then there are certain um synthetic fibers that are added that tend to pill quite uh-huh. easily as well silk doesn't pill because it's one long filament right so this is the confusing part for me because because acrylic pills worse than anything why yeah. like you're making a manufactured fiber why can it not be manufactured to not pill well i would imagine that there are some that like there's some of, i forget which is the the there's one of the synthetics that is worse like a longer no, acrylic is bad yeah for sure because yeah. i've owned acrylic blend sweaters and i for a whole lifetime because usually if you go out and you buy like a a regular sweater as a teenager or a young person without yeah. a huge budget yeah you're getting an acrylic blend sweater yeah. i thought all sweaters pilled full stop yeah no because they all had acrylic in them yeah but it's it's really bad so i don't the, get why you wouldn't just manufacture it longer or whatever it would take to stop that I from happening in a manufactured more, fiber yeah it's probably more work to manufacture yeah. it longer it must be something yeah yeah so you can buy good quality acrylics that are that are more resistant, the same right. as anything. It's just it's, this, it's yeah. the, the quality of what yeah. you're doing. The other thing that can make something that um, you know is a spinner. You've done everything that you can to do. You do everything right, and you have a yarn that's fairly resistant to pilling. Then if the fat fiber itself is tender, what they call tender, and it, it can it break. breaks. Yeah. So then you have, even though you spun longer staple lengths, you end up with short fibers in your in your knitting or your yarn. Then they'll, they'll, that will create some pills. Yeah. So what? Um, so what happens with our own yarns? Let's say we spin. We tend to spin fiber that's about two and a half inches long. And I spin at quite a tight um, twist. So the twist that I use is usually somewhere around um, five and a half to six twists for uh, per inch. So if you've got two and a half inches of fiber and you're twisting at five and a half to six in- twists per inch, you can see that it's fairly tight. Mm-hmm. And um, when I do sock yarn, I, sw- I um, twist at... Um, uh, seven over seven twists per inch so that's quite a lot yeah so and I do it on purpose right because you want a sock yarn to be more durable so the more twist per mm, inch the more yeah, durable that it too. is but also the more twist per inch the less pilling you should have mm-hmm. if you've got a good quality fiber mm-hmm. so that's um so that's the long and short of it. And you can, <laughs> funny. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was unintentional pun. Yeah. But the and sometimes you have yarns and you if you're knitting with it and you're starting to get pills, your garment is going to pill. You're in trouble. You're in trouble. I've had that happen. Yeah. That is disheartening. Somebody yeah. wrote and asked like if they tried to knit with the same yarn again, could they get a different result? Yeah. No. Can you treat it or whatever? No. There's so, no. Yeah. yeah. So having said all that. As a yarn manufacturer, we try to get fight like we try to make yarns that don't pill. Mm-hmm. So, um, but all you can't help it. Like you may like Ken's um, Roscoe sweater, for example, that's made from our yarn. And um, if you if you wear like under the arm, you might get some pilling. But usually, if we've done everything right. You might get a few pills just as the first, but once you remove those, once. you shouldn't once. Right, okay. You shouldn't get more. Right. Unless there's, you know, like a I said, problem. There's, a, there's a problem. Or if you're having breakage. So if, yeah, so if um, if you end up with a yarn that is um, has a lot of tender fiber in it and it's breaking constantly, so you're, you'll never get rid of the pills. Right. If it's just, it just makes sense that 
when it's fresh off the off the skein and you've knit it and you're wearing it and especially under the arm uh-huh. that you you might get a few little pills not to panic once you take those right. off then that's it usually it and that's what a gleaner is for apparently yeah we've never actually even held one of those things no. but apparently they're like a miracle yeah or people do use them for yarns that will pill over and over and over yeah. again they're basically gleaning a sweater every time they wear it yeah and if that's okay. fine yeah. then go for it yeah um no that's not a problem i don't i mean nobody wants to wear a sweater full of pills no. so you do need either to prevent that from happening or find a way to deal with it so that you don't have to throw your sweater out yeah yeah okay. i need to get one for a certain project that <laughs> i'm literally not allowed to wear because it, it was wear it, in the- it was a lovely cashmere blend yarn um, and it's a not lovely our, sweater. Not ours. Not ours. No. no. A it was a commercial yarn. brand. And uh, I mean. It was then that started to pill while you were knitting it. It was pilling before I even got it off the needles. Yeah. And I mean, it was a lot of work. Yeah. I actually I forgot about it for a sweater. minute. So I've got to get a gleaner. And yeah. See if that'll fix it. Because <laughs> that's the only reason I'm not wearing the sweater. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's awful. And it's like I, a lace cardigan. Like, come I for, on. I forbade her to wear it in the... In, in the, the shop, yeah. lest someone think we had spun the yarn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. God so. forbid. It makes sense, though. I mean, you don't want to... But, I mean, I yeah. just put so much work and money. And I paid for it. Like, I mean, I bought... I, well, I bought some of the yarn uh, to finish it and stuff because some yeah. of it was we had around here, but then I needed more to finish it, and it was no. a whole ordeal, and now I still can't wear it. Yeah, and the, um, you know, the the we try to make yarns that don't pill, but other than whatever little scuffing happens, like right. when you, just when you finish it. So that's what we try to do. But uh, um, if you, having said that, if your yarn is really like super soft and tender, you might get more, more yeah. pills than... Yeah, than and I'm him. sure we've done the odd batch that pills more than others. I mean, yeah. we don't have that kind of control over what the sheep gives us. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're buying farm from other yeah. farmers as well. Yeah. And sometimes it, you might have, sometimes you get short cuts. So back right. to shearing. Right. When the shearer goes over the, um, over the sheep and doesn't is not right next to the skin and then they have to go down again you get a little second cut second second cut in your yarn and we do do a process that removes those but if you haven't removed them all they kind of work their way up to the surface and you might but again it would only be once yeah but you'd have to take care of that so but it's my guess um, that a lot of the general public just thinks that wool pills full stop no. and that's the end of the story because no. there's so many acrylic blend sweaters out in the world yeah and that they're the worst yeah I mean but, and some some um, real wool yeah it will or in short cashmere yeah and stuff like that you will have pilling even if it is a natural yeah I mean but, that's what I thought I thought yeah. well wool pills that's yeah. just the way it is no yeah, but so, it's not. So, I mean, if you look at... Um, there's not a one on it. I no. Just, well, okay, there's one. Yeah. So, this <laughs> is... Uh, not really This a is the silk mohair and Garfield Grizzly, which is actually a pretty loosely spun yeah. yarn. And I wear this all the time. Yeah. And there's no... I haven't removed any pills no. on it. And mine's too new. I mean, I wouldn't... <laughs> but if you pass me Jennifer's... Uh, I think she's worn this a few times. So, this is made at a Selkirk Worsted. We're just now we're checking you under your arms of your sweater, Jennifer. <laughs> this is kind of like uh, you know you have to be careful with one of these live demonstrations. Yeah. <laughs> but there's not a pill on it. No, this is looking good. Yeah, there might. There's no, one that's little ball, just actually but stuff that's that has a, attached. Yeah, to it, it like lint. <laughs> yeah, there's no, not, there's nothing. There's no not even under the arm. No. Hopefully, she didn't clean it before she dropped it off because she's pretty smart. She might have thought of that, but I think yeah. it looks good. So there's a few little things, but that's actually stuff just like fibers that are stuck yeah, to white. Yeah, this is quite a soft batch. Yeah. A little tiny bit here. Yeah. But I think that's... But I mean, uh, I can't even really see Partly it. her increases and in stuff that she did under the arm, but you can't see it. No, it's no, not. No, it's there's very none. smooth. Yeah. Yeah. So... And I know our yarn passed the pill test when Andrea knit her car, Beth, and we were watching. We were so excited oh, that yeah. she was going to be knitting with our yarn. <laughs> We made it, we packed it in the box, we sent it to Germany. She took it out and she was like, and I like to make sure nothing pills. And she was like, Rrr! and we were like, oh, oh my God, <laughs> if that sweater pills, we're going to have to close up shop. Yeah. We were 
live. She did it right live on the, well, not live, but like right we, on the recording. We were like, ah. Oh, I was going to have a stroke. Yeah. When I watched but it. I mean, she we took the, went yeah. the knitting and went like this. Oh, on. you're asking for trouble, but it passed. Yeah. And your flax is over there. Does that have any yeah. pills on it? Let's go see. Okay. All right. So we grabbed the flax because it yeah. was sitting over there. Yeah. And this was a yarn that didn't pass. Um, These are, it was seconds because it was slubby, which means their shorts or unspun fibers in it. Yeah. Still nothing. And you, this is five years old? At least. Four years? It's, well, we must have had the mill. Yeah. So yeah, it's five years old. This is dog hair. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, pretty good. Yeah. This is our Aaron waist that I knit this flax in. Yeah. Uh, I wear it all the time. There's like, I don't know, one here. Yeah. Then A little bit never, more on the forearm. You've never... I've never uh, done anything no. to it. I've never even washed it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so a little yeah. bit there. But if you took Well, those, those are slubs because oh, it, okay. it was not a weld. That's why it's in my sweater instead of on our shelf. Oh. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Repurposing those over onto your sweater. Yeah. But yeah, no. Not pilled. No. Worn plenty. I yeah. love this sweater. Everybody loves their flax. Yeah. This is why I'm knitting it again. Yeah. Um, and if you didn't know, they did an update to this pattern and they've now incorporated some short rows so that you can fit over yeah. the back neck better. And, uh, they've also incorporated different instructions for the, um, collar. Oh, okay. Just to add more structure. Oh, okay. So that you pick up instead of just knitting it in the round. Oh, okay. Um, but actually for mine, he likes the open neck, so I'll leave it open. I don't want more structure. Yeah. Um, I like it open too. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't like wool up. Yeah around his neck yeah. so we'll just leave it as is but yeah so that's it you can tell so, i didn't alternate here though yeah <laughs> that was <laughs> who knew about that? alternating back then yeah not i, I that I, was it was that the first sweater you knit no i knit that um sweater babe one out of the super oh, yeah. wash <laughs> yeah yeah but this is the second sweater i think it's the second sweater i knit i might have knit something else but this was the first sweater where I really told I was going to teach myself something about sweater fitting yeah okay. so this fits me like a glove mm-hmm. and that was an experiment I did about like you know I actually had um I modified the right. the um raglan yeah uh decreases or increases so that it would fit my shoulders better yeah. and this was really just an experiment in custom fitting for right. me because it's a simple pattern it's easy to modify yeah um so i was probably i may have knit a couple things before because to yeah. even have the confidence to go in and try to do that it definitely wasn't my first one but it was the first one i knit with our mm-hmm. yarn yeah. yeah so then we knit all, most of our sweaters out of seconds yeah so that's it so that yeah. and that's and that would have been something that would have had potential to pill because mm-hmm. there was underspun sections in it mm-hmm. so that uh, so that would have been loosely spun and so. it's literally it five years old yeah yeah that, it doesn't That's perfect so. really i mean other than the lumpy bumpy <laughs> yarn yeah there's no kind Pilling. of like it was Pilling's, kind of a thick and thin pilling's the least of its worries <laughs> <laughs> not on purpose <laughs> yeah anyway so yeah so that's it and it, like i said if you have a we've actually seen yarns that there's actually pills on the ball of yarn Totally. Yeah. I mean, you see them in discount bins at yarn shops yeah. all the time. Yeah. I mean, I'd be mortified. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like, you literally, it's just pilled on the shelf, never yeah. mind while you were knitting with it. Yeah. Uh, it's too much of an investment to really yeah. have that happen. But, I mean, you know, like you said, the best thing to sort of remind yourself is, generally speaking, if you take them off once, you're good. Yeah. So don't panic. Yeah. Um, give it a try with the gleaner and then mm-hmm. see how it goes after that. Yeah. And, and the gleaner is always an option to save your project. Right. Or you can even, I, you can get them at the dollar store or whatever, the combs. Yeah. It's just like a little rough, uh, they're called sweater combs or a sweater stone. Right. It's almost like a pumice yeah. thing and you can just take take them off that way. So yeah. it's really... I'm going to have to try and get out that lace yeah. card again. I mean... Trying to get them off lace is probably not the easiest either. No, and like you said, that was pilling as you. It were was extreme. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was a synthetic. Um, it was a polyamide. Five percent. Yeah, was enough to do it. Yeah, but it was also a cashmere blend. So if they were cashmere seconds, that might have been contributing it to yeah. it too. Yeah. When the so, rest of it was I, that wool, was one, so. that was the fiber that I was thinking is probably right. mean supposed that, to be better. I would know that it that well. I now think that it pills because it definitely. But it, it could have been the cashmere. I mean, yeah. would you, if you pick, pick the pull, <laughs> pick the pill off and looked at it under a microscope and determined which fiber created yeah. it, yeah. Uh, it would be more telling. But right. I don't know. All I know is 
it's a disaster. Yes. Unwearable mm-hmm. in its current state. That's but I'm right. going to get myself a gleaner and yeah. see what I can do with it. And that. some people don't mind. They just want, they'll just No, they just, it's a matter of course, they accept that as part yeah. of wearing it. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you know. And that's fine. If it's something you don't wear that often, it doesn't bother you, then yeah. have at her. Yeah. All right, good. Have we forgotten anything? No. I think we're, uh, we'll just ask everybody that if they enjoy the podcast to give us a thumbs up. Thumbs, thumbs up, up. Thumbs up. <laughs> Sum up with a thumbs up. Yep. And we always enjoy your comments. Yes. Keep the comments coming. Yep. I'm still working on the last episodes, but I'm doing pretty good at keeping up these days. Yeah. And uh, hit your notifications. Please subscribe and hit your notification bell if you haven't already. Although, honestly, I think most of our people are subscribed. Yeah. But we would also appreciate you sharing um, the link to our video with other people that you know that you think might enjoy it because we yeah. are trying to grow our audience yeah. and we're grow- it's growing really slow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're like underachievers on that front. Maybe yeah. we don't mention it often enough. Yeah, maybe. I don't We've know. been pretty good about not asking for too many favors lately. Yeah. It's all so, <laughs> but, but if you could share it with your yeah. <laughs> friends on social us. media, it will help us grow. So we would appreciate it. It's, uh, it helps us stay on the good side of YouTube. Yes. Yeah, that's otherwise always, they won't recommend us to good. anyone because right. if nobody subscribes, they think we're boring. Yeah. That's how that goes. That's right. You get punished for yeah. being, for being like, uh, not relevant. Yes. <laughs> Basically. <gasps> All right, good. So now we have the harmony part. Oh, yeah, the harmony part. Yeah. Great. So we'll, What's that? We don't know yet. Yeah, I know what it is, but we never oh. tell what it is. Oh, okay. So. Not harmony. even me. Yeah. <laughs> and I have to put it in the video. The that's harmony. some tight security yeah the <laughs> harmony part this this time i filmed the harmony oh, okay. part but i didn't have any sound on my camera and i had wanted sound but i think oh i remember it. this now yeah i'm on a need to know basis yeah <laughs> so there's two you've got two choices in okay. the file okay got it there's landscape okay and there's water view okay so you can choose which one all right, and I just enjoy picking the music for them. Oh, okay. So I'm happy that you didn't say anything. All right. Or oh, no, I was... no sound. Yeah. That's fine. We'll okay. have music instead. Okay. All right. All right. Bye. Bye.